long-anticipated GTA San Andreas is finally out, and we're dedicating this edition of our show to its release. That's right, and with us once again is the one and the only Tommy Tallarico, oh, host of Judgment you. Day, Electric Playground, and really good-looking guy. Oh, thank you. You know, I'm excited to be here, and we're excited to hear what people think of Grand Theft Auto. That's you know, right. Tommy, when we were thinking about who would be the right person to join us for the special look back at the series, mm -hmm. you were the first person whose name came to mind. Oh, really? Why is that? I don't know, actually. Well, Where? maybe it's because Tommy Versetti is the character and he's Italian and I'm Tommy Tellerico, I'm Italian. No, that's not why. Mm -hmm. No, it's, maybe it's because the game's raw and gritty and I'm like kind of really raw and gritty. You know? <laughs> don't make me laugh, come on. No, well, no. maybe because GTA has a really great soundtrack and I do soundtracks for video no, games. No, no, I, I don't think it. that was it. No? no? Well, maybe it's because I like to carry a bat around with me and beat the hell out of people! <laughs> that, that was, was it! Yeah! That was uh, it! Yeah. to the all Grand Theft Auto episode of G4 TV. You guys and your bats team, you have to admit that we are super excited to have with us our favorite gangster of all time, the Tominator, <laughs> Tommy <laughs> Tallarico. Tommy Tallarico, so you. excited. Great to be here again. Thank I'm hoping you. to make out with you this time, yeah. though. We'll see how it goes. I got what, the bat in my hand if you want I? to do anything. What, give oh, me no, the no, bat. No, no. Well, oh, sorry. He's, looking, right. he's looking to move up in the world, Laura, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Man. Listen, listen. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is on, out in stores, on store shelves, and we've been playing it, and yeah. it is undeniably one of the biggest games to come out this season. Absolutely, Absolutely. Of course. But like, let's talk about how the game started. The original Grand Theft Auto. I, I tell you, I remember when the game first came out, it wasn't even sold here no. in America. No. Yes. I had to go online and get it on eBay. It was only in available Europe? in Europe, and right. it came out. Okay, well, it was a top-down game. Like you said, only game. on a PC. You can yeah. play up to four characters. The cool thing is it still took place in Liberty City, which I'm like so cool they still stuck with the Liberty City. You know, the you know, funny thing is is that the, guy, the way the characters walk <laughs> like this. Very primitive. On the thing. But you know, what was great is that the, the cars still controlled amazingly, yep. even yeah. in the top down I mean, the game was, was awesome. great. It was stayed on the UK charts for two years on yes. the top 20. I mean. And uh, every car was drivable. But let's take a call and see what they have to say. Hey, caller. Hello. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Parking Kingdoms from Columbus, Ohio. All right, what would you like to talk about within the GTA series? The soundtracks over the uh, years, games. Okay. Yeah, what was your favorite soundtrack over the years? Well, so far, Vice City, although I like the uh, Laszlo the best in GTA 3. Yeah, I, I agree. Vice City, well, that was like, I think there was such a push for the soundtrack, too. And to right. really have such a collection of 80s songs all in one game, totally. I thought it's awesome. Uh, the timing was great. Now, you know, on the new game, we have Willie Nelson. We do. Well, we have Tupac and Willie Nelson. Tupac and Willie Nelson. I mean, that, that's I love a, that. And yeah. the great thing as well is that they release the soundtracks as normal soundtrack CDs right. as well. But not only the individual radio stations, but also yeah. the box set. Right. Which they did last game, and they're doing this game as well. I love that Tupac has been, unfortunately, passed away for quite some time, but he's making more music now than he was when he was alive. That's true. That's true. <laughs> now, do you know on the new soundtrack that they're releasing, it's a two-disc set? Yeah. And they yes. have a special DVD with, with all sorts of cool, unique stuff that's oh, only on that, that DVD. That's a collector's edition, I think it yeah, is. Hey, thanks, yeah. Caller. We appreciate it. Let's move on. Hey, Caller, what's your name and where are you calling from? This is Cutie Pie, and I'm in Oregon. In Oregon. Hi, Oregon. Hey, Cutie Pie, what would you like to talk about? Well, I wanted to actually ask what you all think about the controversy that Grand Theft Auto gets from the media. Ooh, that's a pretty big, negative. That's, it is pretty negative. Can and I that's answer a this question? Fantastic oh. question. <laughs> you know, now, you know, because I'm so sick of these politicians and media outlets and parents groups. Mm -hmm. You know, all talking about video games or violent this and that. Look, the video game industry, we police itself. Mm -hmm. We 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 rate games, and if and if some kid goes, well, they make us. They, well, yeah, <laughs> but but we do it, and it's right. not our fault if somebody buys uh, another game. And and violence in video games. I mean, sorry, last time I checked, Hitler was a big Crash Bandicoot fan, <laughs> right. and, 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 and Kane didn't bludgeon Abel with a virtual boy. Right, right, right. Now, right, but the, no, look no, at no, the but games that you're referencing. You're not referencing the, the Grand Theft the, Auto series that in, uh, encourage you almost to run over pedestrians but it's and 17 get up innocent years people. Old, it, is, it is 17 years old, but I think, are, are you a parent? Uh, no, no, I'm just no. asking. No, no, and I'm wondering if we might all feel differently if we had kids, because I do wonder... I wouldn't let my kid play Grand Theft Auto. And there, are, and there are, exactly, I wouldn't either. And there are kids that aren't 17 getting their hands on these games, and it is up to the parents to do it, and as far as policing them, you're right. Parents have to police their own kids. People exactly. have a right to make whatever well, they I are. challenge any politician... All right. <laughs> ...to take me on in a debate, because... 
Games do not cause violent okay. nature. Okay, right. get sit. Okay, just. I'm, where's my bodyguard? <laughs> seriously, just seriously, it. put down your bats. Get your finger off I the trigger. Get it. Pisses me off. Put when your they fingers say that. on the phone because after this, we're taking more of your calls. Right after this, can you keep that from him? You're going to time out. There it is. You are going into time out right I'm now. I'm a little upset. The Yankees. Hold calls. me. Did eight years in the service and met my wife while I was in the service as well. When we got out of the military, the plan was always to go back to school. As a kid, I was never a good student, and it was actually amazing to me how going back to school, it was exciting, it was fun. GI Bill, the VA, and the US Army College Fund all came into play. Having my mom be at graduation and see me walk the aisle, that was kind of a, a dream come true for both of us. He has one of those personalities that just it fills a room, so when he's happy, there's just this light that comes from inside and just engulfs everything. I want my children to know that there isn't anything that they can't do if they put their minds to it, right? We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. To find out more, call 1-800-ITT-TECH or visit us on the web. Hi, Lee Raymond here, host of Arena, and one of my fondest memories of hosting the show was Kevin Pereira's audition. Kevin had never hosted anything. I don't think he'd ever been on television before. And when I tell you that the first five minutes of his audition, he wet his pants. You're plugged into G4 Rewind. Does no Grand Theft Auto has hijacked our show today, so we brought in Tommy Tallarico to make Tommy. sure Tina doesn't get out of line. <laughs> That's oh, right. You know how she gets. Now, we're excited to have Tommy this week, but yeah. next week you guys have to tune in because it's going to be about RPGs. We've got Paper Mario, mm -hmm. Alien Invasion, and a bunch of others. If you want to talk about these games specifically, we've got a number for you 1 866 G4 TV. Two one five. So call it. Leave your opinion about those specific games, and we may play them on the air. Do we get to hear you uh, doing phone sex? Yeah. Uh, no, that's going to be cut. That's out. a different <laughs> number. That's, that's a, the that's one nine hundred. Yeah, that's oh. the nine hundred. Exactly. All right. Well, listen. We're talking about Grand Theft Auto, so let's get back to the phones. Let's see what people want to talk about. That sounds good. Hey, caller. Hello. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Celery Goblin. Call from Lowell, Massachusetts. All right. What would you like to talk about? Oh, uh, the Mad Goblin. <laughs> the maps in uh, San Andreas. Yeah, what have you heard about the maps? Uh, like, I heard they were going to be like three times bigger than the first ones. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's correct. Yeah. True that. What else yeah. have you heard about the maps? Well, I just think it's going to be kind of stupid because <laughs> in the other games, like, like you start off in the mission, right? And right. you drive around for an hour before you actually get to the mission. And it's going to be time consuming, and I don't really want to play the game that much. Right. You know what I'm going to have to say? I never really found in, in either Vice City or 3 Liberty City, that the uh, that I was bored in the maps. Like, I never was like, right. gosh, I wish I could go to more parts of town. Like, there's enough to keep me busy. Yeah, so. because, like, every car is pretty much drivable. I mean, there's a ton of places that you could go inside. I mean, you know what, that's like, uh, the way I look at a color is kind of just a personal gameplay choice and opinion. Well, I, I you know? think, too, that, that what, what the focus is, too, is that you can do a lot of different things all over the place as well. So yeah. it's not just, you know, you're driving from 20 minutes from point A to point B. Right. There's going to be a lot of side missions, so... You know, I hope so, because let me say, one of the things I hated about Mafia, which is a yes. similar game, is that the driving, it just seems uh, right, so right, long right, right. from thing to thing, and, and it wasn't enough to keep me entertained. In jump game. out, beat up a hooker, and then get back in your car. Because you know what, what I mean? played <laughs> playing San Andreas, I haven't had that experience. Trust me, no boredom yet. All right, thanks, caller. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, caller. Hey. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Tyler, and I'm calling from Bristol, Connecticut. All right, Tyler, what do you want to talk about as far as GTA is concerned? Uh, my favorite moment in Grand Theft Auto 3. All right, why don't you tell us what Later, that is? I want to hear. Better All be right. nice. My favorite moment in GTA 3 is probably when I make the game go in slow motion and I take out my flamethrower and I just burn people and make them scream. <laughs> now, now, Tyler, what do you love about that moment? I don't know. It's just fun hearing them scream no. Okay, okay so okay, would you Tyler. enjoy um, the game Postal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll bet you did. Have you ever been arrested? <laughs> nope. I mean, flamethrowers in general are cool. Yeah, they Don't are. Don't you think? No, I mean, no, any game are. where you get a flamethrower... 
Absolutely. And, and you actually, can burn Tyler, if you go to our site and people watching, there's a ton of everyone's favorite GTO moments, and it's really fun to go through and see because it's such an enormous open ended game that there's so many bazillion you know, things you can honestly, do. On a smaller scope, not to revisit the violence conversation, but we don't do these things in real life. Right. So when well, I get to us. drive yeah. down the road and watch people jump out of the way, <laughs> yeah, exactly. screaming, that's good times for me. That's yeah, right. it can yeah. be a lot of fun. Um, Thanks, Tyler. I appreciate the call. All right. Thanks, guys. Now, listen, we asked you to go to our website, and you did. And you wanted Grand Theft Auto cheats. Ooh. And there's some cool ones, guys. I didn't get an invite. You didn't? No. Well, let's, I'm going to give it to you right now, All because right. right now it's time for the Cheater's Request presented by Singular Wireless. Tina, pay attention. I had. In this week's Cheater's Request presented by Singular Wireless, we're answering Samantha Gavin's request for Grand Theft Auto Vice City codes in this GTA special. This game has all kinds of cheat codes, flying cars, unlock all weapons, instantly spawn new vehicles, change Tommy's looks to play as a different character, turn the cars pink, or have a crowd of groupies follow you around, just to name a few. To turn the cars pink on the PS2 anytime during a game, enter circle L1 down L2 left X R1 L1 right circle. You can turn Tommy into a random pedestrian by entering D-pad right, right, left up, L1 L2 left up down right. Re-entering this code will change Tommy's looks again and again. To turn the cars invisible, enter triangle L1, triangle R2, square L1, L1. There's a lot more code, so check out the Cheat Sheet Master Database for the full list. To send in your own cheaters request for some other games, visit us at g4techtv.com slash g4tv. Now, where was the Tommy Versetti nude code? <laughs> yeah. That's what I wanted well, to see. Now, why did you want to see that? <laughs> All right, you right there could be the winner of a $25,000 shopping spree at Circuit City. That's right. G4 Tech TV is going to be giving away four $25,000 shopping sprees. That's right. Wow. And in addition to $500 in daily prizes. Woo! 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 Well, if you want to get this, what you have to do is from November 8th to November 21st, watch G4 Tech TV every night from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern. Woo! Whoa. Hey, and to enter, look for our G4 Tech TV Digital Digs Dash Sweepstakes commercials, which contain G4 Tech TV codes. Each time you see a different code, go to www.g4techtv.com slash digital digs dash to enter. Woo! Now, there, there are Woo! four new Woo! codes each night. Really? But the more you enter, the better your chances to win. So you can, like, cheat like I would have done. Nice. But, uh, and it's brought to us by... Circuit City. City. Very good, very good. <laughs> now, we've been talking about some of the older Grand Theft Auto games in the series. Let's hear what the viewers, the viewer reviews on the new San Andreas game. All right. Hey, caller. Uh, yep. Yeah, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Underflesh from Chandler, Arizona. All right. So you've had a chance to play San Andreas? I have, so. All right. Do you think this game lives up to the hype? Uh, definitely. It's definitely a, a lot different from the last uh, couple. Uh, there's a lot of different side missions. Like, I got in a car last night, and I you can uh, do pimping missions. Yes, collecting <laughs> um, hoes. Yes. Nothing better. There's all sorts of different things. Uh, you can, uh, at night, you can go burglarizing things. Yep. Uh, right. And so it's a lot, it's a lot different. Um, the cooler thing is that the cars don't slow down when you run after them like the last one. Right. And did you notice, like, the blurring effects, too, when you start to go, like, really fast, when you steal, like, a Ferrari or something, right. and, and you're going really fast, they start to do, like, a little need for speed blurring Yeah, that's action. true. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and uh, sure. Caller, do you think this was better than Vice City? Um, I, from what I've played so far, yes, but it's, it's completely different than the last one. All right, well, we totally appreciate your thoughts on the yeah. game. I wouldn't say completely different, but it's got a few new features. Yeah, well, it's completely different sort of setting. You know, you went from, like, the 80s in Miami to right. total, like, right. sub life. I noticed it started to get a little stale, just a little bit. Right. You know, like, not saying it's not a great game. Tony Hawk's are great games. Madden's a great game. This is a great game, too, but it's, like, started to play. A lot of new stuff. I agree. But right. I'm still beating up hookers. <laughs> and, and you're still right. doing the same thing. People. Well, let's see how everybody else feels. Hey, caller. Hello? Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yoda Girl from Mechanicsville, Virginia. There you go, Yoda Girl. What do you think about Grand Theft Auto San Andreas? I think overall the game is great. Yeah? What do you think about the violence in this game? Uh, no more violence than Vice City. That's very, or very... Halo. 
Is there anything you didn't like about this game? I mean, because I have to admit that there are some things that we were talking about earlier that kind of got on my nerves a little bit. Anything that you could say was a flaw? The map is too small, and the blimp, it's hard to make out where you're at and where you're trying to get to. The map, the map is, is too small. small. Have, you, have, you, have you only <laughs> opened up no, no. the first city yet? Oh, you, you mean the map that appears the map on your screen. screen? Yeah, exactly. I agree the with her on, on that. Screen. Yeah, you, I actually agree with yeah. that, because you, then yeah. you have to go, and you kind of have to go out, then go to your big map and kind of like scroll to find out exactly where you are. Exactly. I thought the gunshot sounds were kind of weak, actually. Right. The gunshot, you know? I, yeah. I was hoping that. Yeah. One thing that's bothered me with all the Grand Theft Auto games is the the damage modeling on these cars. I mean, they just get banged up so easily. All you do right. is just brush against a pole and my car's falling apart. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily brushing against I'm a, a pole. Driver. Maybe I'm running into it at 90 miles. Where are you going with this story? <laughs> hey, thanks, caller, for your thoughts. I totally appreciate it. Hey, caller. Hey. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Tadakin from Atlanta. Tadakin from Atlanta. We love Tadakin. Good boy. He's a good boy. All right, let's talk about uh, GTA San Andreas. What do you think? Uh, I love the game. I, I like it a lot more than Vice City, actually. I, I like the main character because he can actually do stuff. <laughs> right, right, right. What would you love about CJ, right? Do stuff like what? Well, the problem I have with the previous game is that Tommy Rossetti is this big, badass character, and he can be blown up, shot 50 times, thrown off buildings, but if he falls in water, he's screwed. Right. right. Yeah. This guy can swim both under the water and on the surface, which and is a bonus. And if Tommy Rossetti got trapped in a corner with the cops, he had to run back out, and Carl can climb. Right, yep. right. Those little things mean so much. And what about getting a big ass fro? I mean, that, yeah. how great is that? The first thing, one of the first things you have to do is have to do in the game is get a haircut. Yeah. The, I of course went and got the fro. Right. Yeah. See, oh my God, I got the fro too. Did, did you? I got the fro and the goatee. goatee. <laughs> I like that one. And the other cool thing was, what do you think about the whole eating thing, uh, Tadakin? As far as like, I only had, to, I played probably like a solid five to six hours. I only ate once. Yeah, I, Which, I haven't eaten at all. You haven't eaten it all yet. <laughs> you haven't eaten it all. You yeah. got to get the pizza. For I like whole. getting ripped, though. You can get you ripped can get if you now, work out. Is your, is your stamina down because you haven't eaten? I don't know. I'm too busy beating up hookers. To right, check. Totally. Dude, <laughs> me and you both. I love this guy. Class act there today. Well, what is fat hookers <laughs> this year, too? What's up with that? I guess it's real. It's life. trying to get real, real life. life. Real life. So. There you go. They Thanks, probably have missing a few teeth no as well. Appreciate the call. Yeah, one thing that they that I've noticed and I've also read about the game is that they don't make it so much like the Sims where you have to eat and it's yeah. annoying, right. but it's there and it does affect you in the long run. Right, right. So there you go. Thank you guys. All right, listen, we're gonna be right back to give away a whole bunch of G4 goodies. But first, let's take a look at Gamefly's top rentals. Can I have a G4 goodie? No. I'll give you a G4 goodie. This portion of G4 is brought to you by PlayStation 2. Uh, today we're going to test the tractor beam from Ratchet & Clank going commando. Oh, nice, dude. Nice job, nice job. Turn it off! Whoa, turn it off! No, turn it off! Sweet. The tractor beam, one of 51 weapons and gadgets now fit for this world. Read it T for T. You're plugged into G4 Rewind. Up next, G4TV.com. New juicy fruit grape or melon? Cool. Ah! Wait, what are you doing, man? Mine, mine, mine. Jackson. Gotta have Twisted Sweet. Yeah. Hey, Gotta have the Twisted Fruit combinations of new Juicy Fruit, Grape or Melon, and Shrapple Berry. Hi, this is Nuts and you're watching G4 Rewind. What is your favorite old G4 show? The first show I really started watching was X-Play. And then it eventually became my favorite show. Arena! Now it's probably Attack of the Show. Judgment Day. Actually, I like Arena. G4TV.com. My favorite show on G4 probably has to be Ninja Warrior. Started watching X-Play and then got into AOTS. Alright guys, we're back, and let me tell you, J Grand Theft Auto is not the only game with hard hits and big muscle heads. In fact, Tina, look no further than the EA Sports Madden Challenge. Let's see what's going on with them this week. Bring it on, Jake Sparks. 
Chase Parks here in city number 19 on the 2004 EA Sports Madden Challenge, and we in Nashville, Tennessee, AKA Cashville. Speaking of AKAs, in the Madden world, everybody got an alias or ballin' nickname. We all catch up with some of these cats, find out how they got their nicknames, and how it stuck with them throughout the Madden world. My name is Madden King, because I come from Omaha, Nebraska. I won like 20 tournaments, so they just start calling me the Madden King. Well, they call me Big Rick. As you can see, I, you know, I ain't too small, if you can just tell, you know. We got Spider-Man, Batman, my way out at me, you know what I'm saying? Bar none comes from, I bought nobody, I, I, I fear nobody. My name from probably Madden back when I was playing Sega uh -huh. was uh, Tommy Chubbs, because my, na my name is Thomas, and uh, Chubbs because I'm skinny. You no, know it's Brandy, baby, bar none. You see it, baby, you know it's for real. When you see it, you know it's for real, baby. So now y'all know just a few of the stories behind some of these Madden ballers' nicknames. I'm Jay Sparks, AKA the Handsome Hustler, because I'm always hustling, and my mama thought I was handsome. Well, we've been giving you all the lowdown on GTA, so let's see who's been paying attention. It's the GTA Trivia Giveaway. So let's, let's play. start let's playing. Play. Really quick, you guys are going to be playing for the two-disc set soundtrack of GTA. It doesn't come out. comes out in a couple weeks, so the dress. winners will be getting it through the mail. So. And a date with Tina. And, yes. a, and a date with me. Can I get throw it, that right? in? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Sure. Why not? Okay, yeah, Topless. Sure. Why don't we just okay. say it? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, we're cool. buying. Okay. All right, so let's take a call. Hey, caller. Hey. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this is Jason from Gate City, Virginia. All right, you a big GTA fan? Yeah, just a little. All right, well, let's see. Tom is going to throw a question out. Oh, okay, yeah, you ready for me here? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, now GTA designer Rockstar North was originally called DMA, as I said earlier. What does the DMA stand for? Is it A, digital machine animation? Ooh. B, doesn't mean anything. Ooh. Or C, Death, mayhem, and anarchy! Ooh! Ah! Go, All caller! Right. A, yeah. B, or C? Uh, C? No! Survey says... Where's the bat? Bash him with the bat! Bash him with the bat! Uh, oh. You're wrong, sir! You are wrong! It actually doesn't <laughs> mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean B, anything. Which is pretty funny, because it's DMA. D Sorry, caller. Sorry about time is violent temperature. Let's take another call. Hey, caller! Hey. Hey, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Kevin and Change from Seymour, Connecticut. All right, listen carefully to Tommy. Okay, ready for this now? Which oh, yeah. of the following is not a gang from GTA 2? Mm -hmm. We got A, the Harry Krishnas. Is uh, it Hari? Hari? They're not Har no, Harry. they're Harry. They're like, well, actually, they're not Harry. B. Okay. B, the genetically cloned scientists. Okay. Or C, the violent video gamers. Okay, which one is not? A, which B, one or is C? Not? Uh, it's well, I enjoy running over Harry Krishna's in that game. That's yes, very true. Yes, good. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go with B. Oh, no! What is wrong with you people? Okay, one more. No. We got time for but one more. more. The answer is, Tommy, the answer is... The answer was violent. C, violent video, video gamers. Gamer. Yes, right. also known as Tommy Tariqa. One more, come on, let's okay, go. Okay, all the songs Okay, on hold on. We need, we need a contestant. Oh, <laughs> screw them. Tommy, I'm we need a contestant. <laughs> all right, hey, caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, my name is Ryan Dotson. I'm calling from Border of Merlin. All right, listen carefully, because none of you guys have gotten it right okay, yet. Okay, our okay. last hope here. Here we go. All the songs on flashback radio were mm -hmm. also featured in the 80s movie A, Scarface. Right. Okay. B, Flashdance. Okay. You know about that. I know all about it. And C, or C, Who's That Girl? With Madonna. Right. Okay, yeah. Okay, um, what, uh, okay, what's the answer? answer? All right, I thought if it's, uh, it's not Scarface. I'm sorry. Wait, 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 hold what on, wait, 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 sorry. Was, what was your answer? I'm gonna go with C. No, no dude, just it's Oh, please, nobody knows what they're doing. I hit the last one. Holy oh, crap, okay. I got it wrong? Yeah, yeah you, you got, got it wrong. wrong. Sorry. Uh, we tried to help you out there. We tried to save Judge B. Really in. Do we have time for one more? No, the answer no. was Scarface, Scarface, but he didn't want to listen. All right, so we are out of time, but I want to thank Tommy Talarico. None of our cars. <laughs> right. 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 We're out of time. Goodbye. This August, X-Play's Got Game as Adam and Morgan travel the globe, bringing you the biggest gaming conventions in the world. You want to see them, and we've got them. Starting with G4's fan-favorite award show, g Then on to Germany's Leipzig, Europe's battleground for console domination. And PAX, Washington's huge indie gamer culture party. You just got done playing Metal Gear Solid 4. I gotta say, this is now one of the must-have games. This August, X-Play's Got Game, all month long, starting August 7th. Part of G4 Stay Out of the Sun Summer.
again? Well, you were telling your son and got into the Xbox Live Link Series. This guy. What's he talking about? I can't understand the word. Right. Okay, Pat Boy, out of the way. Yes, Hmm, marvelous. What's this? Now you can stop smoking for free. As a special limited time offer, before Easy Quit goes on sale at your local retailer, you can stop smoking in just seven days for free. Introducing Easy Quit, the natural stop smoking system that helps you stamp out nicotine cravings. Why pay up to $150 for other products, patches, gum, and expensive prescriptions when you can stop smoking in just seven days for free with Easy Quit? Thousands of people have used natural products to stop smoking, and now you can too. I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, and with Easy Quit, I quit in three days. I was smoking for nine years, and with Easy Quit, I quit in seven days. With Easy Quit, I quit smoking in seven days, and I feel great. Easy Quit has been the absolute best product I've come across to help quit smoking for good. The secret is Easy Quit's unique combination of herbal ingredients designed to quickly eliminate nicotine from your body and reduce your desire to smoke. I recommend Easy Quit because it's safe, it's effective. It's a product that I'm going to continue to use in my practice as an effective way of helping people stop smoking. Once Easy Quit helps you master the cravings, quitting is a breeze in just seven days. In fact, because Easy Quit is natural, you won't have to worry about side effects like weight gain, nervousness, or insomnia. And think of the money you'll save after you've quit once and for all. So no matter how many times you've tried to quit, you owe it to yourself to give Easy Quit a try. Do it for your family. And most importantly, do it for yourself. Because now you can quit smoking in just seven days. As a limited time offer, Easy Quit can be yours absolutely free before it's available your local retailers. Time is running out, so call the 800 number on your screen right now to get the complete Easy Quit Stop Smoking System, a $159 value, absolutely free when you call today. As an added bonus, we'll also send you a three-month supply of Easy Lung to help you on your way to a healthier, smoke-free life. A $90 value, it's yours free. Altogether, the complete Easy Quit System, including Easy Lung, is well over a $200 value, but it's yours absolutely free with this limited time offer, so don't delay. Call now. Hey, I'm at Sega headquarters. I'm here with Neil Robeson, and we're going to talk about Sonic Adventure for the Dreamcast. How you doing, Neil? Doing good, doing uh, good. What are some of the levels in this game? What are we doing in We've this? We've got all kinds of things. There's one that takes place in Vegas in a casino. Uh, there's one that's in an arcade. Uh, there's ones that take place at the beach. There's ones in Mayan ruins. There's ones that are on aircraft carriers. I mean, all sorts of environments. I don't think we've ever seen a 3D platformer that can move like this game. The real key to it is the 128-bit graphics of the Dreamcast. Yeah. And what that does is gives us the ability to be able to throw this stuff up at the screen as fast as possible. When you see this huge aircraft carrier moving through the air, that's not a, a video sequence, that's actual gameplay. That is it very similar to the 2D 16-bit Genesis games that we used to play? What you've got is a lot of different kinds of games inside of Sonic Adventure. Yeah. There's the adventure part, there's the just straight ahead move from point A to point B as fast as you can. Mm -hmm. There's some puzzle things in there as well. And it depends on the kind of character you've got. You've got Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, E-102, which is a, a robot of Dr. Robotnik. And then there's Big the Cat, a giant cat that is actually uh, going around doing a lot of fishing. A giant 
fishing cat, cat named Big. Who's looking for his friend who's a frog. Who's looking for his frog friend. Yeah. Every single level you can play as all six characters. Excellent. So who's your favorite character? Uh, Knuckles has got to be it. His ability to climb walls and be able to fly gives him a distinct advantage. Uh, any secrets you can tell us about? Yeah, pay attention to using that visual memory unit and uh, you'll see some secrets unlocked there. Now what's going to happen with that GMU? You can actually take it to the arcade and plug it in and transfer data back and forth between the Dreamcast and the arcade. The Dreamcast modem. Are we going to be able to use that in the, the Sonic game? You can take your timing or your scores be able to post those and compare those to other people around the country. How about a multiplayer game? Is there uh, one, nope. Two, Sonic two was never designed really to be that, um, but uh, they're looking at that for future versions. Cool, maybe a yeah. match Sonic. Exactly. <laughs> Tails just goes and kicks his ass. It'd be so much fun. I think Knuckles would be tougher. Yeah, Knuckles. Yeah, definitely. He's a crafty guy. Exactly. He's pretty sneaky. Okay, thanks, Neil. You bet. Here are two really cool sequels to two of the most critically acclaimed real-time strategy games ever on the PC. I'm here with Mark Toronto. I'm going to talk a little about Age of Kings, the sequel to Age of Empires and the expansion pack Rise of Rome. There's a lot of competition with RTSs these days, but Age is a really popular game. What do you think makes it so popular? Um, I, I think just the approachability, it's easy to pick up, anybody can just sit down and start playing. In Age of Kings, we're in the Middle Ages, it's just a really exciting time period, it's romantic, castles, knights, things like that. It's, it's uh, 13 new civilizations, everything from Genghis Khan and the Mongols. In the Middle East, we have Saracens, uh, Japanese, Chinese, uh, the Britons, the Teutons, the Franks. It's really exciting. And what about some of the technological advances and that sort of thing? What can we expect? We've changed the scale of the graphics. They're, the buildings are much larger, more beautiful. Um, in the combat side, uh, formations really lend a, a whole new look to the game that you have control in the battles. Um, you can just group units together and they, you know, the swordsmen go to the front, archers in the rear, and they move around the map uh, almost like they have minds of their own. You've done so much research on this game and people really seem to, to get into it, especially the multiplayer aspect. Are we going to see a really strong single player game again? Yeah, actually with single player we've, we've taken a character focus, so we'll start with like Joan of Arc and chronicle her whole rise from just a nobody to uh, saving all of France. Sounds like a fun character to play. Yeah, I think uh, the people who enjoy Joan of Arc, uh, Genghis Khan, um, and some other historical figures people might not be as familiar with. What do you think your competition other games for Age of Empires? I haven't really looked to see too many of the other games. I know there's Total Annihilation Kingdoms and some of the other games. The nice thing is that it keep, we keep raising the bar in, in this genre. I mean, StarCraft really pushed us to have a much stronger single player game. They did a wonderful job in their great competition. Anyway, we're getting really sick of robots. You know what I mean? And who isn't? <laughs> so um, the point was to uh, try something a little different, to sort of take a little sidestep away from our old theme. So we decided to try a new theme, a new direction with Total Annihilation Kingdoms. How exactly are you continuing the TA legacy? What makes it the same uh, brand of game? It sort of fits the TA mold for a couple of reasons. One is the level of action is still really, really intense. It's sort of like, um, like, like Total Annihilation. Total Annihilation Kingdoms has just this sort of arcade style. Lots of big explosions, lots of things going on, hundreds of units clashing with each other. I mean, just a sort of a scale that you don't typically get with an RTS game. What are some of the really cool things that we can expect to build in the game? You know, with TA we had a lot of gizmos and gadgets and stuff like that, but you know, we're doing a fantasy thing now, so we decided to really just sort of boil it down to magic. Um, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, there's demons and archers, there's, uh, there's swordsmen, a trebuchet, which is kind of this big piece of uh, medieval siege equipment which can just shoot many, many screens. So it's an RTS game, and RTS games mean you start with something really small and simple and, and it's really easy, so you have these little weak guys walking around and they have something minor like this and then from that you build up to the next level of weapon or technology and that would be something more like like this oh my goodness so here, here you go Jeez, where do yeah. you keep this thing and that's pretty uh, on the wall and, and locked up then later <laughs> we get things you, you build up to stuff like this I mean, later on in the game, gods and wizards and all kinds of stuff are walking around, just leveling everything. So this is the kind of scale we're dealing with here. I want to talk about multiplayer. That was huge. Yeah, it was kind of our calling card. You know, it, yeah. it, it's really the thing that, that made the game live and, and live a long time, too. You know, the fact that it had such an excellent multiplayer experience really just kept it going and going. But with TA, it's, it's, it's carnage. It, it's just a lot of action. Tony Hawk Pro Skater!
Well, I'm here at Activision with a good friend of mine, Scott Pease, and we're talking about <laughs> skateboarding. Uh, Tony Hawk skateboarding. Right. Did Tony Hawk actually do motion capture for this? Sure did. Yeah, we had Tony down at uh, Skate Street in Ventura Skate Park. He was going big on their half pipe, and we had this monster motion capture set up with like grids of cameras, all all different sides of Tony. I'm here at Activision with the one and only Tony Hawk, master skateboarder. What's it like to have your name as the title of a video game? Never thought I'd get to work on a video game, so I'm just stoked about that. And it actually looks like you. Well, a little generous in the chest, which. Uh, I don't mind. It's like the first totally realistic, true to the sport skateboarding game that's ever been done for the PlayStation. Now, do you skateboard? Uh, Scott, who's another designer on the project, he and I actually were very bad skaters as kids. Watched Tony on films and stuff like that, and it was kind of our dream to do a skateboarding game like this because, you know, we sucked. But what makes this game so much more cooler than all the rest? Anything that you can do on a skateboard in real life, you can do in the game. So we got your full complement of flip tricks, we got grabs, all the different grinds and slides. What's the best trick you can do? Uh, the face plant. Have you been teaching the team how to skateboard? Uh, yeah, well most of them got a crash course when we were doing the motion capture. A couple guys picked up boards and took some slams. Now my favorite part of the game is when you actually get hit by a car. Did you do the motion capture for that? Yeah, I did the driving for that action. Oh, right, right. <laughs> now the game, you actually go and skateboard in all these like really interesting places. I like, can go to a shopping mall. It's true to life. I mean, you know, skaters are always on the lookout for anything, any terrain that looks like it'd be fun to skate, even if they're not supposed to be there. Uh oh, we're, get, we're getting this booted. This, this is what happens in real life to skateboarders, see? Yeah, they, see, they get skateboarders get picked out <laughs> all the time. One thing we really wanted to emphasize was skateboarding is not about, like, racing so much. It's about tricks, and that's the emphasis of the game. In the levels, you can trick off everything. If it looks like you can grind or slide on it, then you can. So do you think I could get your autograph? Yeah, no problem. You have to get it tattooed. Okay. Okay. What other skateboarders are in uh, the game? Well, in addition to Tony Hawk, we got, like, nine of the top pros in skateboarding today working in the game. We got... Oh, oh, jeez. Man, let me show you... Let, let me show you how this is done. Okay? Just get on it. Keep going. Go. Hey, how's it going? I'm Kevin Wiseman from ABC's Alias. You are watching D4, TV for Gamers. When it seems like all is lost, when it feels as if you have no hope, when you are outnumbered, overpowered, and they've got you cornered, that's when you realize your last best hope is you. Halo Combat Evolved, rated M for Mature. Whatever. And then I'm throwing dice in the alley. Officer Leroy comes up and he's like, Hey, I thought I told you. And I'm like, Yeah, what up? Then up comes Zaffo. I'm like, Yo, Zaffo, what's up? He's like, Duh. I'm like, That's cool. Cause this is my United States or whatever. And this is Brand my United States or whatever. You know, there's as many video game magazines out on the market today as there are dirty magazines. And I should know. Well, because I get a lot of video game magazines. Anyway, look, do yourself a favor and pick up the new mag by Computech Media called Insight. What has been the most challenging thing about putting this magazine and this whole website magazine together? Ja, erstmal vielen Dank, dass ich hier sein darf. Ja. Und das Schwierigste war für uns, die richtigen Leute zu kriegen, weil es ist nicht jeder so gut wie du, Tommy. Can you tell me a little bit about the whole concept behind it all and what, what was your goal in this whole thing? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, first of all, we wanted to create a magazine for every gamer. And not just for, you know, for the hardest players on this planet, but for every person that plays games. Mm -hmm. If you want to put it in one sentence, you want to be the maximum of gaming. You guys are spending 15 million dollars? Yes. On just television advertising for a video game magazine. Oh, I've never been done before. No, never. I mean, we wanted to make sure that everyone out here knows about this magazine. 15 million bucks on what? Okay, firstly, TV advertising. Right. And as you know, no gaming magazine has ever gone to that level. Sam Bradley of 3C, 
It's a brand new copy of Inside Video Games Magazine. Oh, you play video games. We've got NBC, CBS, TNT, Fox, Comedy Central, ESPN, TBS, UPN, USA Network, in addition to FX, Sci-Fi, and MTV. The competition looking at you guys with the eagle eye or what? Can you see the um, Bay Bridge? The Bay Bridge, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you see the guys that stand there and want to jump down? Yeah, yeah. I think that's what the that's competition, the competition. Is going to do. Right now. <laughs> what are you doing up here? Oh, Tommy, this is Patrick. He's the director of InsideGames.com. <laughs> hey, Tommy, I gotta go. I gotta cool. go to a meeting. All right, it's cool. really nice meeting you. Hundreds of thousands of video game websites yep. on the internet. What is going to make you guys different from all the rest? You know, there's a million websites out there that are dedicated only to the really hardcore gamers. That leaves out a lot of people that really enjoy games. So one of the things that we've been trying to do is kind of open it up a little bit so that the people who are into games, but maybe also into a lot of other things, music and movies and sports and that kind of stuff, will feel really comfortable at our site. Oh, hey, Greg! Greg? Uh, well, you know, we're, uh, we're up here. You interview Miyamoto, and the headlines read, getting shiggy with it. This is great stuff. Yeah, totally. I mean, we're trying to just make the magazine much more entertaining than anything else. What can we expect in the first issue now? I saw, uh, who was the guy on the cover, the wrestler dude? We got The Rock. Uh, we got Mankind, all the wrestlers, you know, we got THQ's WrestleMania 2000. I saw Kid Rock in the magazine. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. We had uh, Kid Rock and uh, his band members, we had like a celebrity battle on the Wu-Tang game. So basically you guys are getting like celebrities playing the games and talking about it. We're really trying to go for a more mainstream audience and make it a more fun read. There's millions and millions of people playing games that, you know, the Top Song magazine only sells a couple hundred thousand. What are the other millions of people doing? There's a party. Hey! Tell me about the first issue. We have Lara Croft on the, on the first cover. We have this huge, hot photo shoot with her. We take her <laughs> all over the place. And, and I understand there's slow-mo shots in there. There's slow-mo shots as well. What makes your magazine different from all the rest? The style and the voice of the magazine are just uh, more entertaining, uh, more lighthearted. Uh, there's a lot of humor. Um, it's just a lot of really cool stuff. Cool. Thanks for coming by to see us. All right. But I'm really swamped, gotta get back to work. Hello? Hello? Any more people from Insight? Anyone else? In Insight people? I guess that's it, Vic. There's no one else here. I... Vic? 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 Vic! Will somebody please tell me what the heck is up with all this Pokemon business? Pokemon this, Pokemon that, Pokemon movies, Pokemon cards, Pokemon video games, Pokemon underwear. I do not want Pokemon underwear. Why is everybody talking about this Pokemon thing? What's going on with this? Well, Pokemon is a craze that people are lining up for here in America. This is the softest, most cuddliest thing. Look at this guy. Yeah, the little yellow guy, Pikachu, here he comes. Hi, I'm Scott McFarlane, and this is the Pokemobile. Best thing about the Pokemobile is as you're driving around, people tend to notice you. Pokemon is the best selling game out there right now, any system. It all started off as a Game Boy game and has grown into a $4 billion industry. It's an interactive RPG, multiplayer, collecting, strategy, simulation, monster battle game. It's a riot. There's two versions of the game. There's the red version and then there's the blue version. And now you've got a Pokemon Yellow game coming out. What's this one going to be about? Pokemon Yellow is the Pikachu Special Edition, so it has 130 characters on it, very similar to the red and blue, but in this one, you get to travel along with Pikachu, so that's kind of cool. The object of the game is to collect all 150 characters and become the world's greatest Pokemon trainer and gain the title of Pokemon Master. No one person can collect them all alone, so in order to collect all 150, you have to link with another player on this cartridge, there's 139. On the blue cartridge, there's 139. What you have to do is find a buddy with the other game, you link them both up,
and you trade and you fight. Are there any other peripherals that are coming out this year? Well, the N64 transfer pack, where you transfer your Game Boy uh, information, is is what's coming out. So that's that's the big interconnectivity thing that you use for Pokemon Stadium. So the last two years has inspired over 600 merchandising gifts, CDs, uh, comic book strips, playing cards. What's this Pokemon pinball game going to be like? It's a really cool game. It's a pinball game, and as you go through the levels, Pokemon characters appear, and you get to collect them and do all sorts of fun things like that. Recently, a movie was released in Japan, and has been the top-selling movie of the past four weeks, as gross ticket sales of over $100 million. Warner Brothers is releasing a movie across North America. It's apparently uh, just awesome. And Japan Airlines has, has even painted some of their airplanes Pokemon characters and is now invading North America. And it's just more and more of the Pokemon craze is, is coming all this year, all through Christmas. It's going to be Pokemon forever. Started with two desperate friends. The SAT is messing with the rest of our lives. I say we steal the answers to the test. Now everyone. You told Anna Ross. There's one more person. Once in on the action. What? <laughs> on January 30th, join the revolution. It sounds like fun. We can do this, but we have got to trust each other. You've assembled a crack team, Chief. The perfect score. Say hello to your future. Copy it. Ow! Rated PG-13. Friday, January 30th in theaters everywhere. This week on the Electric Playground website, we talked to Dogma director Kevin Smith. You're a big video game fan. Uh, yeah, I was really looking forward to the Superman game. I'm just frustrated. Nobody makes scrolling games anymore. Everything is that 3D nonsense, and, and I find that very hard to control. And I, I, I still like hold on to my Sega Genesis and play a lot of that. I know a lot of people like Sega Genesis. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a great system. What are some of your favorite games on that system? EA Sports Hockey, you know, 93, NHL 93, 94, 95, 96. Um, there's a Rocky and Bowling game. Love, play it religiously. Um, things like that. There's been some great licensed games like that. They put out a great Spider Man game at one point, which I really enjoyed um, beating. And there's a Tiny Toons game. I'm really into the licensed stuff. Anything that I can watch as a program and then be the character, you know, I'm all for it. Tune into the Electric Playground next week for more footage from Wizard World 99. All right, that's good. That's good. Okay. All right. Yeah. You, you stopped acting. Oh, yeah. yeah. What do you think? Does that look pretty good? Huh? What would you think about uh, Mario Golf, man? For the Nintendo 64. Mar oh, that's good. Mario Golf. It's my golf club. Golf. It's not for serious golfers. Yeah. I wouldn't put it on there. I disagree. Of course you do. I dis I, I'm going to stop you right there, sir. It wouldn't be a fun show if you didn't disagree <laughs> with me. I think serious golfers are going to get a kick out of this game. It's got everything you want out of a golf game. Tiger Woods Golf, you know, if you want a serious, great game, if you're serious, you're like, oh, 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 oh. So, what are you talking? Golf oh. is a, a boring, <laughs> sleepy game. But <laughs> that's easy. It, well, it's easy to play. Yeah. But it's not easy to beat. I'm just, you know, it's it's one of these typical Nintendo, I feel like I'm being spoon fed and I'm like three years old with drool coming out of my mouth. I like all those characters. I like the crazy cartoon world. Right. He loves That's Mario. That's all fun. I love Mario. You show me your Mario underpants. It's a great multiplayer game. Four people can play at the same time. Yeah. The mini golf game is really fun and that's going to be good for, for kids. But I also think that just serious hardcore golfers are going to find lots to play in this game and lots to enjoy. If you're seven, you'll love this game. <laughs> Or if, if you're Vic. If you're 70, you'll love this game. I, I, it was one of the best games I played this year. And it's definitely one of the best Nintendo. And, game and one of the best games you played this year. It was. Because it's that good, I'd give it a 9.5 out of 10. Well, For know, what it is, it's Metal a Gear Solid is a 9.5, 10. Nice. Mario Golf is not. I'd I, give it a 7.7. I, I, I didn't like the golfing in Metal Gear Solid. Though. You didn't, did no, you? The um Jammer Lammy. Speaking of being spoon-fed baby food, it's not hey, baby level. Anymore. Now, now, that was a freaky level. It's a weird this game. Is, this, this, I, let me tell Start you something. Start to finish, a weird, weird game. I'm a huge fan of Prop of the Rapper. Prop of the Rapper was, you play this game and you're going like, wow, this is some really freaky stuff, yeah. and, it, and it's really funny. 
that times 10 is unjamalami. They're the freakiness, they went beyond weirdness in this game. It, it looks like they gave them carte blanche to go ahead and do whatever the hell they wanted to do. <laughs> and they came back with this, it's, it's seriously, it's, weird. It's, it's like a drug trip <laughs> on a CD-ROM. It's not like hip hop and dance stuff. The no, music's that's, more that's rock cool. and roll, which I love. My favorite uh, song was like that funk thing when you oh, put out wicked. the fight. Yeah, with that the was my favorite. Total Sly and the Family Stone groove. And I also dig that you're you're trying to keep up with the guitar, and it's not just another rap. The two-player game is two, the, best the best part thing. about yeah. this game. Plus, there's you more can levels. Actually, the game. play two players, so you know one guy gets a chance, then you get a chance. That was the coolest part of the game. If you love Parappa, you're gonna like this a lot. It's weird. It's unique. The two Player mode's awesome. Eight yeah. and a half. I'd give it an eight and a half too. Yeah. Eight point five. I thought. Just uh, copying. Yeah, I don't have a mind of my own. That's true. What should we do now, Tommy? Um, let's talk about <laughs> Draken for the PC. Draken, awesome. Yeah. I love that game. It was very cool. It's like Tomb Raider. Uh, it, Tomb Raider meets Dragonheart. Bang. Okay. There you go. All right. End of review. No. It's a really fun game. The, the graphics uh, are graphics are insane. I wasn't a hundred percent happy with the way I moved around. You love to hack and slash, and there just wasn't enough hacking and slash. A lot of exploring. Like, if you're not one of those people who love, like, exploring for seven hours, yeah. then, you know, you might want to think twice about this game. But if you are a person who, like, you know, loves to go around, explore air, different areas, boom, boom, do all this stuff, there that's, this is the kind of game. It the, the payoff is the action stuff, definitely. Yeah, yeah. The production values are high, except the voice acting, again, is, is a little bit cheesy. Uh, <laughs> but it's a multiplayer dragon combat game. You get to find a dragon and go kick your friend's asses with this big dragon. I mean, that's that, that so cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. 8.5? Yeah, yeah, what would you I, give I, I give it a 7. It's an above average game, but it's not like a great, great, gotta have a game. You just think of Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur. It is better than the arcade. They put new modes in, the music's great, um, the characters are amazing, the weapons are cool, you, the movement is excellent. Talk about the coolest design characters ever and the, the, the beautiful but, rendered but, visuals. In this but game. at the end of the day, it was a game that I was playing two years ago in the arcade. This is it's the best weapons-based fighting saying. game ever made. I didn't see this game though. Oh my god, this is the next generation of video oh, gaming. I, did. I, I, I saw this game completely. and I said, oh yeah, I saw that in the arcade last year. No way. This game, they totally improved the, the look of this game. Every texture detail the in this background. game. Background. Amazing. The, the, everything flows. The wind has an effect on the, on the characters' hairs. They, they move their eyes around. They correspond with where the weapon slashes go. I like pushing people off. That's my oh, favorite. Oh yeah. I love the Edge Master guy. I think it's probably the best fighting game I've ever played. I love weapons fighters, and this is definitely but the best one. But it got into being a little button mash. No, play it with two players. It's a totally different experience. Oh, of course. Namco did a brilliant job. It's Be definitely the one to get for the Dreamcast. Best Cast. game on the Dreamcast. Nine. Definitely. Ten. Nine. I give it a ten. I don't know. One. And one, two, three, push. Push. Oh. Push. Oh. I got it. Oh. I can't oh. That's hard to push. Oh. If you're not sick of us already on television and the website, well guess what? We have a new internet online radio station. It's called epradio.com. Production assistance for Electric Playground is provided by Sony Computer Entertainment, publishers of Jet Moto 3 for the PlayStation. Activision, publishers of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Now everyone thinks they can skate like Tony Hawk. And Computech Media, publishers of Insight Video Gaming, Insight PC Gaming, and InsightGames.com. Pick up the new issues of the magazines. They're out on newsstands now. Probably the greatest moment in tournament history would be the perfect score on Pac-Man. 10 billion times Pac-Man's been played in the last 20 years, and no one really even figured out how to do a perfect game until Billy and a few other players came along. I don't know if I was ever playing for fun. Every quarter, every play I ever had, I was out to beat the game. The first hour was intense because I had 18 keyboards I had to get through. When I got past those, I thought to myself, gee, I've reached the threshold. Now it's just a long, easy trip to the end of the game, but it wasn't. 
With 238 screens to go, Billy digs deep. Blinky, Pinky, and the rest were hot on his trail. Blinky is a complete headhunter. Pinky's always trying to push in front of you. The most unpredictable one is Inky. Clyde, he gets in your way more than anything else. After nearly six hours of play, Billy closes in on history. I squeezed the joystick so hard I was afraid I was going to shatter it. I wasn't going to be denied video history's greatest prize. That perfect game probably was the pinnacle achievement of game playing for the last 20 years. It is so extraordinary that even though now the rest of society knows how to do it, no one can probably really pull it off. On the final board, the game runs out of memory. There's computer garble on the right side. The left half is normal. Once you clear all the dots, there's no more points to be had. There's nothing left to do but die. Roswell, New Mexico, 1947. UFO wreckage is discovered and seized by military personnel. It is speculated that the alien technology recovered has been applied to modern day innovations. To this day, the government denies any existence of alien technology. Financing available on Alienware Systems. Report's 2004 Technology Almanac is back. It's a one-of-a-kind resource for every day of the year with advice, tips, and secrets about today's most popular technology topic. It's everything you love about the screensavers. Networking, MP3 players, we've got it all. His last two books were bestsellers, and this one is sure to follow. And don't miss all the other great books from Tech TV, including Security Alert, Sell It on eBay, and Windows XP for home use. Leo Laporte's 2004 Technology Almanac. Get it at a Barnes & Noble near you or online at barnesandnoble.com. All right, people, spray on your mental mosquito repellent and sew some new name tags in your underwear. We're going Psychonaut Summer Camping, this time on Cheat. <laughs> campers and welcome to Cheat, the show with a merit badge in mayhem. I'm Kristen Holt and in this episode we'll be taking on Psychonauts, a mind-blowing new game set in a summer camp for gifted psychics. But instead of knot tying and three-legged races, the kids at this camp learn to blow up bad guys and set fires with their brains. Believe me, nothing beats a marshmallow toasted by some kids pyrokinetic powers. So let's meet some of the campers and counselors you'll be bunking with. Those of you who fight well, you will find yourselves on the path to becoming international secret agents. In other words, psychonauts. The rest of you will die. In this pimped up 3D platformer, you play as Rasputin, or Raz, a gifted psychic. But he has mental defenses like I've never seen in someone so young who's on the run from his psychic-hating father. Raz finds refuge in a summer camp for the gifted, where he and his bunkmates train to become psychonauts, secret agents in the battle against evil. Raz trains with three top agents. Coach Oleander. Is your name Joey? No. Because I'm going to call you Slowy Joey. That's not my name. Sasha Nine. Your performance, young cadet, was outstanding. And the lovely and talented Mia Vidello, who's stuck in the 70s. It's Rasputin, the rolling rock star. Camp Whispering Rock is a lot like regular boot camp, except for one thing. The training happens in the instructor's mind. Say something hideous and horrible jumps out at you. Something so disgusting that it simply must die. Ah, oh, so tacky. I can't look directly at it. Foregoing arts and crafts and tetherball, these happy campers learn the finer points of psi blasters, levitation, and pyrokinesis. Pyrokinesis, as you can see, isn't easy. Watch it, man! To a 
attain a higher rank, Raz is charged with collecting figments and mental baggage. Collecting all the mental baggage in each subconscious level will unlock primal memories featuring concept art. Locating Psy cards will also boost Raz's power. Once Raz collects nine cards and a Psy core, he can move up a level. Ah, feels so good. Also, Rasputin has to hunt arrowheads deep underground. These ancient artifacts are used to buy additional items, like the cobweb duster, which will open up new areas. Got it! Grown-ups aren't the only NPCs in this game with interesting personalities. Like Mr. Mopio, right? That's right, baby. Daddy's here. Meet Dogen, a powerful telekinetic who communicates with cute, bushy-tailed squirrels. I would never do that. I could never... Kill everyone. Um, okay. Well, let's turn our attention to Billy the Bully, who thinks he's the top candidate for psychonaut status. What's flying at me? Well <laughs> Bobby Zeltz's foot, that's what! <laughs> and that would be Lily. She's a no-nonsense, opinionated psychic girl. Shut up! Why don't you take a picture? It'll last longer. Oh my god! Let's make out! But deep down, all she really wants is some summer loving. When are you going to shut up and kiss me? Um, I can hear that. I know. Wow, hot stuff. One of my favorite things about this game is Tim Schafer's brand of humor. From Dogen's sadistic squirrel problems to that peeping Tom. After the break, we'll take a sneak peek at some of Psychonaut's tastiest treasures and I'll serve up a heaping helping of cheat codes. Stick around. Hmm. Huh. Mm-hmm. Objective. Use people skills. Uh-huh. Retain customer. Mm -hmm. Education. Bachelor. Mm-hmm. 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 It says you have experience with Excel and Word. But what do you exactly mean by 38th level beast lord? <laughs> Super Elf Bowling. Download the game now and go for the perfect score. Super Elf Bowling. It's all new and available only at TechTV.com and InStorm.com. Welcome back. Today we're revealing sneaky secrets our crack staff dug up on Psychonauts, one of the trippiest games we've seen in a while. Trippiest? Is that even a word? Next, you'll learn how to blaze through the scavenger hunt and power up your character with a minimal amount of work. Can't do the scavenger hunt without a list. Report back to me when you have enough items for your first promotion. Now get! Kids, normally it's not a good idea to take orders from scary guys in the woods. That's how horror movies start. But this time, it's okay. Scurry around Whispering Rock, collecting the 16 things on your scavenger list, and you'll rank up four levels for each eight items you find. Here's the first half of your reward. Start hunting in the cave above the kids' cabin area. Slide down, and you'll find this refrigerator below. Hey, I need that for my scavenger hunt. It looks like it's completely frozen in a big block of ice. Use your pyrokinetic powers to solve this frosty puzzle and retrieve the turkey sandwich. Next, head for the main lodge behind the inventory cabin. There, you'll find your next item, the gold doubloon. And in the rafters of the cabin is another item you need, the voodoo doll. Next, take your little cheating butt outside and go to the speakers near the entrance to the transit system. Climb up, bounce towards the platform using your psychic ball, then float down. Jump to the platform to the right, and you'll find the Eagle Claw. The next four items are in the GPC Wilderness Area. The Miner's Skull is right next to this bear, but watch out, because he plays rough. Now stand over the open spout and activate your shields. Pressure will build up on your side, and the skull will pop out. The glass eye is at the end of this stream. 
Follow it to this metal grate and use telekinesis to pull it out. The next item's tricky, so listen up. Yes, yes sir. sir! The golden acorn is being hoarded by this squirrel. Of course, when you get too close, he scurries into his tree. To get the acorn, turn yourself invisible and run back towards the Slappy character. Now you can claim your reward. The final item you need to gain four glorious levels is located next to the acorn. Jump on top of these boulders until you reach the one with the vines on it. Summit the boulder, then grab the pirate scope. Now you've crossed off half the items on your list. Nice going, camper. We'll get to the rest of the scavenger hunt items later. But right now, because you've been so good, I'm going to show you how to become a super powerful with just the press of a button. Yeah, I thought you'd like that. I'm ready to learn how to really fight. Oh, really? Hmm. What? Um, nothing. It's just that I didn't think you'd really take me up on that offer. It usually scares the kids off. There are two paths to psychonautum. Training and cheating. And since you're watching the show, I guess you prefer hardly working to working hard. Arrowheads are important because they're like currency. And currency attracts the ladies. Now you gotta pay the toll. One arrowhead, pay up! Watch out for these chicks. They're in the arrowhead extortion racket, but don't fall for it. Instead, if you're playing on the Xbox, pull down the left and right triggers before every code and enter the sequence in under three seconds and listen for this confirmation. You cheated! Now you have almost 10,000 arrowheads and can buy almost everything in the inventory lot. Sold to the big-headed kid with the gloves. Even with all the arrowheads, you can't buy some items until you reach a certain ranking. Ah, doesn't look like you've got the rank you need there, kiddo. To loophole this annoying game legislation, enter the next code to unlock all the items in the game. You cheated! Except the Cyball Colorizer and Dream Flaps. Thank you, all of you. You're all so kind. Now, although Gloria starts out crazy, our next code will really send her around the bend. She'll start speaking in leet. You cheated! You must be my new leading man. Aren't you handsome? In leet, letters are replaced by numbers and symbols. Of course, old Gloria is pretty whacked out no matter what language she's speaking. I guess that's the curse of having an eternally young face. Now let's continue our quest for mastery of the psychic arts. You could undergo training to unlock all your powers, or you can just enter this code. You cheated! Having all these powers from the start will make scavenger hunting a breeze. And while you're cheating your buns off, why not max out your ranking? You cheated! Then you can have some laughs testing your ill-gotten powers on some unsuspecting enemies. Ow! Right in El Odio's butt! Now listen up, cadets. Once those codes are entered, there's no turning back. They can't be undone. Because who wants to spend hours digging up arrowheads anyway? So keep walking the cheat walk. You can find the codes for the other console at g4tv.com slash cheat. Okay, next up, we'll wrap up the scavenger hunt and find some very special Easter eggs. <laughs> Hey, what's up, homie? What's up? What's up? That's the new silver PSP, huh? Yeah. That's great. That's great. That comes with Daxter? Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. It comes with the Family Guy freaking... It comes with the Family Guy freaking sweet collection. Yep. That's great. It comes with the one... It comes with the one gig memory stick duo. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Let me get dibs on that. Let me just jump in there. No. That's fine. It's not even a big deal. I'm just gonna be down in the food court. Grab a corn dog. Dude, get your own. I'm your wingman, home skillet. PSP. Welcome, not Scoot. I'm Laura Swisher. I'm your TV pal, Martin Sargent. All right, tonight's show is so full of Vin, it'll pop you in the nose if you look at it crosswise. Take a walk on the wild side of technology. Unscrewed, weeknights at 11.30, 10.30 Central, only on Tech TV. <laughs> Welcome back to Cheat and our look at Psyching Out Psychonauts. I'm Kristen Holt, we're halfway through the scavenger hunt, and I'll show you where the rest of those sneaky items are located. I know, it's like I have psychic powers or something, woo! I'm halfway done with the scavenger hunt. 
Holy smokes, look at that! Yeah, great, Raz. But half a scavenger hunt ain't worth squat. To finish the job, head to the recreation campfire area. There, you'll find the condor egg nestled high atop this tree. Once you have the egg and have enjoyed a good condor omelet, make your way to this scary monster tree thing and pick up the cherry wood pipe lying next to it. Next, locate a large tree with a campfire in front of it. Bounce to the upper branches and you'll find the dinosaur bone. Apparently, this was one of those tree climbing dinosaurs. The next item is located near the janitor's camper inside a wasp nest. To get the goods without being stung, run at the nest and jump while using your side blast. The fertility idol will fall from the hive. The next two items are in the boathouse and beach areas. The Psychonauts comic book is located on the left side of the bridge as you walk down from the main entrance to the main lodge. The next item, the diver's helmet, is located on the beach, but it's only accessible when Bobby and Benny get their brains taken out later in the game. TV. Jump on top of the bridge that leads to the bathosphere and head for this wooden mast. Bounce to the left and you'll find the helmet being guarded by a cougar. The final two items are separated from the rest. The gold watch is on top of this fountain. To get it, take a ride with Linda to the asylum. Thanks, hulking lungfish. You know, you really aren't as hideous as people say. From here, enter the schizo guard's mind and complete the milkman's conspiracy so he'll open the gate for you. Hey, is that milk regular kind or the exploding dream kind? Then bounce up to the water fountain and grab the goodie. The final item is located high atop a ledge on the eastern wall of Sasha 9's secret lab. Enter the lab through the GPC ladder, walk a couple of steps down, then psychic bounce to glory. Congratulations! You found a bunch of random useless crap. I'm done. I completed the whole scavenger hunt. Great old Drake. I don't think anyone's ever done the whole thing before. Well, hold still. This might hurt. Okay, thank God that's over with. Well, sort of. You see, even after you finish the scavenger hunt, you're still not done finding all the game's buried treasure. After days of digging, our research team uncovered a veritable basket of Easter eggs, as well as one world builder's secret tribute. Check it out. Freeze! Don't come any closer. I'll never tell you the location of the milkman. Never! Okay, let's all just settle down and talk Wow, happy landings. What is the mission of the Milkman? Oh well, don't worry. There are more secrets to discover. The best thing about summer camp is that you get away from your parents nagging. You'll go to bed when you want, eat when you want, and watch what you want on TV. 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 He's completely brainless. In the log cabin, visit Phoebe and Quentin, playing their instruments in the main compound. Hey, do you have a lighter? Because if you lit it and held it up right now, that would be rad. And completely insensitive to me and my issues. To crack open a disturbing Easter egg, locate the TV upstairs and hit the Y button until you see this show. One guy smashing another guy over and over again. I think it's a hit. Hey, Dogen, I got a secret for you. Hey, not fair! Whispering is so rude. What did he tell you, Dodo? You can also catch up on the latest camp gossip by reading other kids' thoughts on the bulletin boards in either the parking lot or lake area. Just an update for everyone. Nils and I are still broken up. And no matter how much he begs, I am not taking him back. And if you thought nine-year-olds with freckles were unlucky in love, imagine how hard it is being a sea monster. Not only do you have to eat most of your lady friends, but you smell like fish. You may call me now by my true name, Rasputin. And what name is that, noble lake creature? Linda. Once you destroy the antenna in Linda's mind, you'll be able to call upon her with this special horn. Not only is the horn an easy way for Raz to move across the lake, but if you play it for Dr. Lobato in the asylum, he'll think you're withholding information. 
Igor, please. Open a window if you're gonna do that. Now, for all you guys out there, here's how to impress your lady. One mischievous world builder, Fred Selker, went to great lengths to express his love. To see what he did, go to Skyscraper Island in Lungfishopolis, where you have to destroy a bunch of planes. Right near the waters above the fifth window in the last skyscraper, force the camera to the right and pull back on the right analog stick towards the nearby mountain. That's a picture of Fred's girlfriend. Hope she appreciates it. Way to go, Fred. I wish someone would put a tribute to me in a video game. Come on, guys, are you listening? Just a thought. Anywho, one final Easter egg before we break. When we rescue Mr. Pokelope, don't give him back to Shigor. Instead, show him off to the other kids and you'll hear some bonus dialogue. Coming up, we're diving into the final mind for a big brain battle. Stay tuned. Well, hello again. Today on Cheat, we're playing mind games with Psychonauts. We've made our way to the end where Raz has melded his mind with Coach Oleanders, and it's a psychic mess. Okay, so enough joking around. Let's get serious and show this boss man who's got the bigger brain. Now it's time for the main event. You've got to help me protect the bunnies. Hey, hey, little Oli. It's okay. Those monsters are gone now. No, it's not safe. He's coming. Here, yeah, little bunnies. Ah! The first step to beating the big-ass butcher of the big top is equipping your shields and deflecting his attacks. To inflict damage, wait for his cleaver to get stuck in the ground, then jump onto his big dome. Keep head hopping and you'll progress to stage two. been associating with psychics? Dead I psychics. Fortune tellers. I think we can all understand why Raz has father issues. After all, the guy disproves of Raz's psychic lifestyle. Plus, he wears his pleated shorts like a nerd. Talk about embarrassing. Follow Pops to the top to prove all psychics aren't evil. When you get to these tight ropes, turn on your invisibility power so you can climb without getting hit. At the top, make sure you turn to the inside of the grates or you'll never make it. Continue past the grates and make your way to the second phase of the battle. You cheated! No! I use the acrobatics you taught me. Don't lie to me, cheetah. You're no son of mine. At this point, your father has teamed up with the butcher and is hurling flaming pins at you. Use the same strategy as before. Equip your shield and telekinetic powers to protect yourself from your dad's tough love and deflect the flaming pins back at the butcher. <laughs> Sooner or later, he'll kneel down and accept his ass whooping. Hit him till you can't hit him no more, then send his sorry butt to the shredder. Rasputin! I see your skull is as hard to penetrate as ever. Dad! In the final confrontation, your real father will appear in your manifested subconscious to help you. Now, son, we have to carefully unweave your psyche from that other brain. We don't want anything bad to happen while your mind is in this tangled state. The damage could be permanent. For the final battle, Rasputin's dad transfers all his psychic energy to his son. This infusion of new power will let Raz gear up for the ultimate showdown against the ringleader. Just keep bobbing, weaving, and bouncing on your psychic ball until your energy recharges. Hit the ringleader as much as you can until he runs out of energy. Thanks 
for helping me save the bunnies. And for talking to my dad. Uh, no problem, little Oli. Bye-bye. Wave goodbye, Mr. Bun. <laughs> and that's all she wrote, folks. We dove into mines, set fire to furry little animals, and cheated to save the world. If you like Psychonauts as much as we did, then you're probably going to want to play it to perfection. I'm getting a definite psychic impression that if you find every hidden figment and item and complete every quest to 100%, you'll unlock a special cutscene in your journal. If you need some additional help, since we can't always read your mind, drop us a line at cheat at g4tv.com or leave us a post on the message board. So until next time, I'm Kristen Holt, and I'm a cheater. You're watching G4. I'm game. Control all your favorite characters just by touching them. Super Mario 64 DS and Nintendo DS. Rated everyone. Weeknights on Tech TV. It's the screensaver. Patrick and Leo tackle your toughest problems. I've got a teenage son in a DSL line. Uh-oh, you got <laughs> trouble, my friend. Turn you on to cool new stuff. We got the tech news, we got the real deal. We got a win thing. And bring you special guests making and using technology today. I'm gonna take a little hammer. Why do a screwdriver when I... Okay, I'm out of here. Help, <laughs> how to, and ha ha ha. <laughs> it's all on the Screensavers weeknight to 7, 6 Central on Tech TV. The calcium in milk helps bones grow. Okie dokie. Sunday nights on Tech TV are all new. First, the truth is stranger than fiction on Secret, Strange, and True. Then, a revealing look at sex in the digital age. Hi, gorgeous. Wired for sex. And extraordinary ideas come to life on Invent This. Then, after Fresh Gear, what if everything you were told to believe was a lie? Explore Tech TV's new series, Conspiracies. Watch Sunday night starting at 8, only on Tech TV. I don't think of it as killing. I think of it as destroying evil or something. That's what you think of it as. From Doom to Grand Theft Auto. Doom was an absolute watershed moment, and violence is very much part of that game. And you go through and you blow away human beings and you blast them into bits. The irony about Grand Theft Auto is the juxtaposition. Wonderful game design beautifully balanced gameplay. Layered on top of all that is the gratuitous violence. From Paducah, Kentucky to Columbine. They like started blowing up and shooting everyone in the cafeteria. So the two shooters walked up these steps of the school and then they saw my sister and uh, that's where my sister was killed. I think the connection is undeniable. The result of over 50 years of research and over a thousand studies prove pretty conclusively that children are affected by exposure to media violence. To try and extrapolate that doom caused these kids to go out there and commit these horrific crimes is pretty absurd. And it's a failure to look at the problems that we have in a larger media landscape. G4 presents the history of violence and gaming. Shame on people that produce that trash. <laughs> Violence in entertainment is nothing new. Violence exists in our society, and it's reflected in several uh, art forms. It's reflected in film, it's reflected in music, and it's reflected in games. But when it comes to violence in video games, people see things under a different light. Today, the game industry is under scrutiny. 
I think partly because it's interactive, partly because people feel like they're in control of this violence, partly because there have been a lot of lawsuits, most of them found not to have merit, that attacked the whole idea of acting out violence versus somebody who actually goes out and does something violently. And there have been some cases of individuals who played a game endlessly and then went out and did something evil. Others want government regulation of video games. Today's press conference will address the issue of video games and young people. What we want to do is to educate adults about uh, these uh, particular uh, ultra-violent video games, the harmful effects that they may have, the caution that one should take uh, in regard to giving it uh, to children. This is a public health issue. Uh, our society becoming more and more violent. I've seen the effects of violence. I, s I had two friends killed next to me. And I lost my sister. And to me, violence is its not a joke. It's not an art. There are people in the entertainment industry that make violence an art. And they make it a game. And they make it something that's toyed around with. But to me, it's not. To me, it's life and death. And it shouldn't be taken lightly. Meanwhile, the game industry and its supporters have their own views. We talk about this industry as if it's some sort of queer animal, queer duck. It's not part of mainstream entertainment. Video game is a, a baby right now in the entertainment industry, and some people want to pick on it. From the days of, of, of Pong, there was not really that sense that games were an art form. Games were originally associated with toys. Given the sophistication of game design, storytelling, the visual advancement in the technology of presenting games, they have really evolved over time to become much more closely linked to film. And film has gone through its share of trials and tribulations. I think a big part of the problem is that the public sees games as for kids and doesn't really understand yet that this is a viable medium for expression and for content delivery. Our average age of a gamer is 30 years old now. The typical gamer is over 18. The core demographic is 18 to 35. There are a lot of examples of violent art forms, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the art form is responsible for the violence. I mean, if you look at actual violence in the United States versus actual violence in, in a country like Japan and see that violent video games are actually on par in both nations, it becomes, you know, a little more clear that video games aren't the cause of the violence. It may look like there are easy ways to say, well, this is the cause of that. But if you dig a little deeper, it's, it's really not that simple. In order to understand today's situation better, we must look back at how it all began. From 1976 to 1982, a new form of entertainment takes over America. I was a video game junkie. I'm talking about Space Invaders, Donkey Kong, Centipede. Despite their primitive graphics, a few games managed to catch the attention of parents due to their violent themes. In 1976, Exidy's Death Race is one of the first games to gain such notoriety. The fact that you were running over people and then, like, you'd see tombstones on the screen, it was a representation of the death of innocence in its most simple pixelized form. That in itself is shocking to people. After facing heavy public outcry, Exidy pulls Death Race out of arcades. Over the next few years, games such as Splatterhouse, NARC, and Terminator 2 catch the interest of the media, parent groups, and other watchdogs. But this is just a prelude to the frenzy that comes when Midway releases Mortal Kombat in 1992. The first game that really wowed me with its war was the original Mortal Kombat. I'll never forget seeing the character pull out the other character's spine and hold it up like a trophy. That was completely beautifully absurd for me and I was hooked ever since that. The realistic graphics paired with the over-the-top violence of Mortal Kombat propel the game to an almost legendary status. It's interesting because they're pushing what they're doing in the game. They're getting a lot of PR, they're getting a lot of attention. That's clearly driving sales. This is how they're running their business. While Midway's bloody fighting game is taking over arcades, PC gamers are being introduced to id Software's first-person shooter, Wolfenstein 3D. 
Wolfenstein 3D changed the way that gamers expected to play because of the level of immersion that was suddenly presented by a first-person perspective. Games up to this point really hadn't looked anything like Wolfenstein. Gamers are impressed with Wolfenstein's first-person graphics, but others are appalled at the game's level of violence. Those same people are even more shocked one year later when id Software releases Doom. Many of the core dynamics of gameplay have often been representations of violence, right? Space invading, you're shooting aliens, asteroids, you're blowing up, the little guy going across the screen. What you started to see in the early 90s was that the graphic fidelity got to the point where this violence could actually be represented in a much more realistic fashion. So instead of you know, shooting the space invader, now it's a Doom situation where you're seeing exploding body parts. Doom was an absolute watershed moment for everybody. You're a Marine going against the legions of hell, and you're actually fighting on the side of God, and you're dealing with these demons, and it's violence is very much part of that game. You get to run around and blow up aliens. Who doesn't want to do that? Both Mortal Kombat and Doom are groundbreaking, but the violent content found in both games will lead to a historic change in the world of video games. Want to get your game on? Well, viewers, we've granted your wish. Games, games, and more games. Turn to Tech TV for the best in gaming, gadgets, and fun. Gun. Let Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb show you how to turn it on. We are a validating force to be reckoned with. <laughs> X-Play, weeknights at 11, 10 central, only on Tech TV. Station 2, rated M for mature. Intriguing tales, spellbinding epics. The world's best anime is on Anime Unleashed. Weeknights at 1 a.m. Eastern, only on Tech TV. By 1994, video games are a hit both at arcades and in homes. And with the release of games like Mortal Kombat and Doom, they're becoming more graphic than ever. But when Mortal Kombat heads to home consoles, more parents begin to notice the violent content, and they don't like what they see. And I looked at it as a parent, and my wife and I talked, and we were saying, is this something we want in our home that we want to buy for our kids? Most of the time in games, the way you looked at your kids playing games and the way you looked at the business of designing and building and selling games was all really the same process, but there, the road divided at that moment. The controversy peaks in 1993 when the U.S. Senate holds a hearing on violent video games. Leading the charge are Senator Joe Lieberman and Senator Herb Cole. And let me tell you this, we want you and not us. The two senators cite Mortal Kombat, Night Trap, and other games as leading offenders. <laughs> there was a growing concern about violence in some of the games. There were congressional hearings in the early 90s that took a serious look at the video game industry and wanted to make sure that the video game industry was acting responsibly, not just in terms of proper labeling the product, but in terms of marketing its product. The hearings lead to a simple ultimatum. I hope you walk away with one thought today, that if you don't do something about it, we will. Establish a video game rating system within one year or face federal regulation. The game industry response is swift. 
The Entertainment Software Association was launched in 1994, and it grew out of two converging trends. One was a growing concern, particularly in the political community, about violence in video games with the release of the first Mortal Kombat, a game called Night Trap, and some other titles. And the second thing was kind of a recognition within the industry that it was really becoming a big part of the entertainment industry and needed to grow up and mature in terms of how it presented itself, both to the public policy community, but as well to the media. The ESA, in turn, establishes the Entertainment Software Ratings Board, or the ESRB. Once the ratings system was created and the ESRB was created, and you had a T rating, or you had even an M rating, now it was a situation where you look at it in a different way, because now it's, what audience do I want to reach? What kinds of tools do I want to use to reach that audience? It's not a government-mandated uh, system. It's a voluntary system to assess the content of games and provide parents with the ability to accurately gauge what it is they're buying for their children, which is a lot more detailed. The amount of specification in those rating systems is a lot more detailed than some other parallel industries bring to bear. For a time, it seems that all is well. One of the things we're most proud of is the rating system really has been a leader in providing good information for consumers to understand what's in the game. When we set up the system, we set it up not just to provide information on age appropriateness of the game, but also what's the content that drove the rating. So each game has an age descriptor, an age symbol on the front of the box. And on the back of the box, it repeats the age symbol and also has a box that says, here's the kind of content that influenced the ratings. I think the ESRB has done a lot of good. It's becoming more effective every year. A parent, particularly, and other consumers can pick it up and say, oh, this game is rated teen for mild violence and strong language, or it's rated M because it has intense violence and blood and gore or a sexual theme. And so it's very simple, very easy for a parent to quickly understand this is what's in the game, is it appropriate for my child? The formation of the ESRB doesn't stop public outcry against all violent games. There are still a handful of titles that manage to get watchdog groups up in arms. Armageddon was basically an okay game that got a lot of press and a lot of attention because it had the violent element. <laughs> Phantasmagoria was the schlockiest, cheesiest game I've ever played. <laughs> I believe Phantasmagoria actually had like a scene of marital rape in it in which this creepy dude with long hair like took his wife against her will and whatnot. And it just totally looked like it was like Lifetime movie, but even like worse. I remember Phantasmagoria because CompUSA would not sell that game when it originally came out. They banned it from its stores. And the reason was because of its violence and because of the nudity in the game, which had full motion video of the heroine topless. And at the time, well, even today, that would be very controversial stuff. In a few short years, the debate over violence in games will flare up again hotter than ever after a series of horrific and unimaginable events. On December 1st, 1997, 14-year-old Michael Carneal walks into his Paducah, Kentucky school with a handgun. He opens fire on a group of students in the middle of a prayer meeting. When the smoke clears, three students are dead, five are wounded. As parents, teachers, and law officials sort through the aftermath, they learn that Carneal is an avid gamer. The parents of three victims in the Paducah shooting file a lawsuit against the entertainment industry, claiming that violent media drove Michael Carneal to kill. Their lawsuit accuses 25 companies of negligence. On this list are Polygram Film Entertainment, New Line Cinema, Atari, Nintendo, Sega and others. Whenever a tragedy occurs, we want to look for a scapegoat. We want to look for something that is the easy way to explain what's happened because what's happened is very, very upsetting. Everybody finds a medium that they feel is influencing the children and they like to point the finger at it and believe that it's the cause of society's ills. Just a few months later, on March 24, 1998, tragedy strikes again. In Jonesboro, Arkansas, an 11-year-old boy and his 13-year-old friend bring a small arsenal to their school and ambush their classmates. I heard a bunch of shots and people were falling. There's the bullet that came about that close from hitting me. Four children and one teacher are killed. 
Ten others are wounded. Uh, this was the, the stairs that the two shooters first went up uh, before they entered the school. But one year later, the worst tragedy of them all occurs in Littleton, Colorado, at Columbine High School. On April 20th, 1999, I went to the school library to do some homework, and I heard shots coming from outside of the school. At first, I thought it was a senior prank. I thought maybe there was some paintball guns or some, some fireworks, until a teacher ran in screaming that there were two students outside the school with guns and that they were shooting other students. The teacher yelled at all of us to get underneath tables. That morning, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, both Columbine High students, embark on a shooting rampage that horrifies the nation. Then we heard the gunshots inside of the school, and they were coming closer and closer to the library. That's where the library was. That's where I was. It was the scene of the most intense shooting. The library was the first room that the two shooters entered, and immediately they were shooting off their guns. They were having conversations with some students before they shot or killed them. Ten students were, were dead or dying, and over 20 were wounded in a matter of less than 15 minutes. The nightmare ends when Klebold and Harris turn their guns on themselves. Among the slain are Columbine teacher Dave Saunders and Craig Scott's sister, Rachel. So the two shooters walked up these steps of the school, and then they saw my sister, who was back in this area. Immediately, I felt like there's something wasn't right with my sister, Rachel. I called my mom. It was one of the first things that I did, and I said, Mom, I'm okay, but I think there's something wrong with Rachel. And I had not heard anything about her, and it wasn't until the next morning that we found out that she was the first one that was killed. The tragedy at Columbine is the worst school shooting in U.S. history. In its aftermath, accusations and blame are spread far and wide. The media repeatedly points out that Klebold and Harris were both fans of violent video games, especially Doom, which by now is six years old. I know that the, the video games that the two shooters at Columbine played affected them. Maybe it wasn't the biggest factor that made them go and kill people, which I don't think it was. But I think it was something, an influence that they chose in their life that did affect them. They played extremely violent video games. I believe, no doubt to me, that it, af it affects people. The first person perspective is a very powerful and very interesting way to depict a game. And when you start depicting these kinds of acts in that perspective, it scares people. Those kids, they may have been playing video games. You know, a lot of kids do. But that was not the problem. You know, their local culture, the way they were alienated at school, these were the problems. Their access to guns, their access to the materials they had, these are the problems. Irresponsible parents that aren't even watching them, these are the problems. Once again, a lawsuit is filed. Families of Columbine victims sue a series of media companies, including 11 video game publishers and developers, such as Sony Computer Entertainment America, id Software, and Activision. They seek $5 billion in punitive damages. Meanwhile, America searches for answers. All the names of the victims on this plaque. In the aftermath of Columbine, there is a flurry of accusations against violence in the media, and more specifically, video games. The outcry leads to endless debates over the effect violent games have on children. I've seen the effects of Two kids who were surrounded by violence with what they chose through video games and other things. I saw them kill other people. They say Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris played Doom, played Quake. I'll tell you what, millions and millions of people in this country, many of them under the age of 25, have played those games. Rather than seeing an epidemic of carnage and violence in this country, between the years of 1993 and 1996, according to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, the arrests for juvenile violent crimes were actually down precipitously. Now, I don't have to mention that this was at a time when the sales of violent video games were at unprecedented levels. If we look at Columbine, we go, where were the parents while the kids were building an arsenal? Instead, they want to go after Doom. To try and extrapolate, Doom caused these kids to go out there and commit these horrific crimes. It's pretty absurd. And it's a failure to look at the problems that we have in a larger media landscape. I think the connection is undeniable. The result of 
over 50 years of research and over a thousand studies prove pretty conclusively that children are affected by exposure to media violence. What's funny is it, no one ever bothers to go into the details of the studies that allegedly link video game violence to actual real world violence. Now how they're affected varies from child to child is also dependent on a lot of external factors like what kind of home environment they grow up in. But even if a child doesn't grow up uh, to become a, a you know a cold-blooded killer, that doesn't mean that they're not going to be affected by exposure to media violence. First of all, they're never talking about real-world violence, but real-world aggression. And the way they usually define that is, is stuff that would make you laugh. They talk about eight-year-olds were more likely to shove each other playing real games if they'd been playing violent video games. They never tell you about kids play rough. When they actually get hurt, they know that someone is hurt and the game ends. That's a part of child psychology that is never addressed in studies like this. A new field of research is looking at how the brain reacts when they're exposed to media violence. The research is showing the brain's perception of media violence is exactly the same as the brain's perception of real life violence. They talk about aggression. Let me tell you what, seven-year-old boys, they're aggressive, whether they play games or not. But I do think that games are part of a culture of violence they contribute to it, but I don't necessarily think there's proof that they cause it. Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman, who runs a, an organization called Killology. He likes to credit himself with creating an entire brand of scientific study, which he calls, ridiculously enough, Killology. And they talk about the fact that they use these same sorts of first-person shooter video games to train soldiers and help soldiers overcome their sort of natural aversion to killing other human beings. So the same sort of psychology is at play in a lot of video games. The boy who opened fire on his classmates in Paducah, they said, uh, had never held a gun before in his life, but he played a lot of first-person shooter video games. And so he learned how to aim with deadly accuracy from playing these video games. In 1999, David Grossman, a former U.S. Army Ranger, writes a book titled, Stop Teaching Our Kids to Kill. He argues that violent media, especially video games, can lead to violent behavior. David Grossman is a pseudo-scientist, and that's being kind. And many of the video games give bonus effects for headshots. He loves to talk about how murder simulators, which is his code for video games with any kind of violence in them, he's talking about how the army is using the very same video games that we're playing for fun to train people to get over their instinct against killing. It's just not true. That's completely wrong. It's completely false. If you spend any five minutes with Grossman's theories, you can begin destroying them immediately. In 2000, a joint statement endorsed by the American Medical Association and other groups is released at the Congressional Public Health Summit. Violent entertainment is a public health hazard. It says that well over 1,000 studies point overwhelmingly to a causal connection between media violence and aggressive behavior in children. What does that teach our children? However, these studies are contradicted by the U.S. Surgeon General. In the year 2000, the Surgeon General of the United States of America reviewed all the available literature, all the available studies on the impact of media in general, not just video games, on real-world rates of violence. And he concluded that he could find absolutely no link between one and the other. In 2000, the Paducah lawsuit against various game and media companies is dismissed. In 2002, the Columbine lawsuit is also dismissed. The debate over violence in games is nowhere near over. These ultra-violent video games teach children how to kill, how to maim, how to destroy individuals. The game is a massive success and becomes the best-selling title of the year. But while gamers are singing its praises, others pay attention to the game for entirely different reasons. Well, Grand Theft Auto 1 and Grand Theft Auto 2 were pretty straightforward action games, top-down, you chase around the top, you play the bad guy. But Grand Theft Auto 3 has sort of revolutionized the game. The irony about Grand Theft Auto as a franchise is the juxtaposition. Wonderful game design, beautifully balanced game design. Layered on top of all of that is the gratuitous violence, the sense of violence without consequence, which I think so many people home in on, or the idea of maybe you can escape the consequences of your actions. Where 
really got in trouble was you were able to use hookers to raise your health level. You take a hooker, go into an alley and have sex, you can see the car rocking. And then if you wanted to afterwards, you could run the hooker over and get your money back. And that really set off a lot of the uh, opponents of the industry. Grand Theft Auto Vice City comes out in 2003. The game receives even more praise than its predecessor and comes under just as much criticism. I think it's gone too far with video games, with games like Grand Theft Auto, where kids are beating up cops, pimping prostitutes, and, and hitting girls. And I guess my question is, to the people that are making that, is it worth it? Is what you're doing worth it? The thing that's interesting and important to note is you can play Grand Theft Auto and not be a terribly violent person. You can steal an ambulance and go take people to the hospital. You can steal a fire truck and put out fires, technically doing good things. We call it sandbox gameplay because it's literally, you can do whatever you want. As with many of the violent games that came before it, Vice City is blamed for another tragic incident of real world violence. There's the case in, in Alabama with this boy who repeatedly played the game Grand Theft Auto and then he killed two police officers and it's a big deal in the media right now because the parents are suing Sony because they feel like this game helped lead to this boy shooting. The shooter's name is Devin Thompson. After his capture, he reportedly says, life is a video game. You've got to die sometime. It's just amazing to me that a criminal can make one utterance like life is a video game, you've got to die sometime. And now an entire industry has got to be called in front of Congress. It's so absurd. Again, and this really can't be stressed enough, there are millions and millions and millions of people gaming in this country. And many of them are adults playing violent games. And what you have seen over the last decade is a precipitous decline in actual youth violence, rates and arrests of youth for violent crimes. The most important thing that we should be saying is that game affected him. It was one of the pieces, one of the puzzle pieces into him killing two people, two officers. Vice City also gets in trouble over what is seen as racist content. What happened was your character was working with a Cuban street gang who was at war with a Haitian street gang. Now, there was a historical context for this. In the 80s, in Miami, the Cubans and the Haitians didn't get along. So it made sense in the context of the game, because the game was set in the 80s in a city very much like Miami. I hate these Haitians. They messed with me for the last time. The problem was the vast majority of the people who got upset about it didn't know that historical context. They saw a screenshot with a guy standing there and it said, kill all the Haitians. This stinking nest of Haitians, we gonna kill them all! It's a real deal. Die! They sort of interpreted that as a call to genocide, which would be horrifying. That's not what it was, but that's what it got interpreted as. After numerous protests, Rockstar has the offending lines of dialogue removed from future releases of Vice City. Take the Haitian kids down! In 2005, California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger signs AB 1793, a bill that requires video game retailers to post signs informing consumers of the ESRB video game rating system. The man behind this bill is San Francisco Assemblyman Leland Yee, and he's just getting started. your friend take your friend with you join us now and get a free mp3 player with a one-year membership join us after 
successfully getting California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger to sign AB 1793. San Francisco Assemblyman Leland Yi pushes for a new bill known as AB 450. We looked at, at current law. Currently there's laws that protect children from, they call it harmful matter, and what's in there is pornography, obscenity. There's nothing in there about violence. This issue was brought to me by one of my staff who saw some of these uh, violent video games and she was rather taken back by how violent uh, these activities were. And so we started to look at how we in fact could handle this issue. AB 450 is going back to the original concept which is making it a civil offense. It won't be a crime. You can't go to jail for it, but it'll be a civil fine if someone were to sell ultra-violent video games to anyone under the age of 17. Well, you know, it's a feel-good feel piece of legislation because the first thing you do is you pass the legislation. The next thing you do is you try to enforce it. It would be very difficult to enforce, but more importantly, it would require another layer of government and a lot of expense because just like alcohol and, and tobacco, you'd have to have inspectors. Well, I you Just don't shoot me, officer. The violence has to be criminal in nature, it's really directed towards the Grand Theft Auto type series. So what's the real purpose? To pass a law so he can go home and say he stopped something? Or to pass a law knowing that it's going to cost millions of dollars to enforce and that voluntary regulation is, for the most part, working quite well? AB 450 is voted out in June 2005. But Yi doesn't give up. After amending AB 450 into AB 1179, he makes another push to get his bill passed and succeeds. On October 7, 2005, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger signs AB 1179. What this bill will do is to give parents some power over the purchase of these uh, games. Uh, it will no longer allow their children to go to the store and purchase these games. The biggest issue the game industry has with Yee's bill is that it treats video games differently than other media, such as film or music. Opponents to the bill also say that is unconstitutional. Um, to Assemblymember Yee, why is the state not targeting movies and other forms of media, such as books, you know, TV shows? It's because these ultra-violent video games, these first-person, third-person shooters, where when you push a button on the computer, then you are literally shooting, killing, burning, maiming individuals. It is those kinds of games that we are talking about. There is an argument made by a handful of critics. They're arguing that the verisimilitude of the video game experience, the reality of it, the graphics, the sound, that it's actually a, a different medium than books and music in the sense that it is more damaging, is the word they would probably use, to a young person. And there is a plethora of studies that demonstrate that there are harmful effects to children. There's really not a, not a lick of, of honest scientific evidence that the play experience of a game is causing any kind of physiological change. For as long as the debate over violence in gaming has existed, people on both sides have been arguing in circles. We want you, and not us, to develop a voluntary rating system. In total, there are probably four or 5,000 titles in the marketplace today, and there are 50,000 retail outlets. For us to try and go back and rate those products, sticker all those products, it, it's virtually impossible. But make no mistake about it, we will move ahead if you do not. But very few of these people have actually had violence affect their lives. That's not the case for game journalist Dean Takahashi, the author of Opening the Xbox. In, uh, in 1993, I, I lost my brother to violence. Um, there was a, a case of mistaken identity uh, when some gang members were looking for someone else that they wanted to, to kill. They uh, went up to a house, they knocked on the door, and they shot the guy who opened it. Uh, they knocked on the wrong, wrong house uh, door, they shot my brother and died almost instantly. After losing his brother Tracy in a tragic shooting, Dean has developed a unique view on virtual violence. I re remember saying um, in a letter to the judge as he was sentencing the guys that they caught uh, who did this, uh, that life is not like a video game. When you kill people, when you shoot them, the bodies just don't magically disappear. On the one hand, uh, it is possible to distinguish 
in your head between fantasy and reality. I can still play games and not think about my brother. Do all of these, these things in a fantasy world and realize that there's nothing happening of consequence in the real world because of them. And yet, I also am disturbed enough by that thin line that I watch what I play. I try to be a sensitized consumer of games. There are certain games that I won't play. To what degree are you desensitizing people? Is it harmful? Is it not harmful? How harmful is it? There's different degrees because you can have a game like 007 where you're shooting spies and you're on a mission. But then you can have a game like Grand Theft Auto where you're just living off the street beating up random people, shooting cops, you know, killing prostitutes. I don't like playing the bad guys. When I play the games, I want to be the hero. Basically, I want to wipe out anybody causing the kind of pain that people cause in my brother. When you think about it that way, uh, I have a, a kind of an ethic on whether I will play games where the only thing you can do is play the bad guy. I think game developers should be aware of this kind of distinction and that it matters. The choices that they make and the kind of games they create do have consequences in the real world. Dear X-Play, how can I play games and watch a fantastic show at the same time? Signed, All Thumbs and Thackeray. Mm, well, Thumbbell, we've made it so easy, even Adam can do it. Play Effective is hyperactive. It's the game you play online while you're watching X-Play. Answer trivia questions, chat, win cool prizes, and more. To play, log on to techtv.com slash hyperactive during X-Play Monday through Friday nights at 11 Eastern, 10 Central. Watch and win. Play Tech TV's hyperactive only on Tech TV. Want to win a date with Laura Swisher from Unscrewed? Oh, yeah. Make a two-minute video and show us why you're the one for her. And you could win a date with Laura Swisher. <laughs> for details, go to techtv.com slash unscrewed. And watch Unscrewed weeknights at 1130 on Tech TV. Today, the game industry is under more scrutiny than ever. Lawyers such as Jack Thompson are calling for violent games to be pulled off store shelves. And I and others are prepared to take legal action not to allow the release of this game because it constitutes a clear and present danger to the safety of our children. You are the great. And politicians like Leland Yi seek more government regulation. In 2005, the American Psychological Association published its findings, which pointed to a link between violent games and violent behavior. You're incredible. You should get paid for this. Uh. Meanwhile, recent controversies such as the hot coffee mod for Grand Theft Auto San Andreas have led to attacks on the integrity of the ESRB. I never understood the phrase meaningless sex. The signage uh, helps, uh, but it really doesn't stem the problem. It doesn't stem the tie of children purchasing these particular games, nor does it stem the tie of other individuals going into these video game stores and purchasing it for children. 
If in fact these games are not to be sold to children and it's not for children, then why is the advertising dollar directed towards children? The single biggest misconception about the video game industry and violent games is that the industry is actively marketing violent games to kids. The Federal Trade Commission specifically singled out the games industry ahead of movies and ahead of music as the industry that was going to the greatest lengths to keep violent content out of the hands of kids. I think most people in the industry would agree that young children should not be playing these hyper-violent games. And that's why the ESRB system is in place. Certain games are made for children, certain games are made for adults, and it's up to the consumers to be able to use the ratings effectively and figure out which is which. See? You gotta play the game that's right for you. A mature rated game is not for kids. These games cost $50. Little Johnny can't save up that much lunch money. And we know for a fact it's parents who are buying these games for their kids and then complain to their politicians about the content. It's an education problem. They have to learn what an M rating means. The debate over violence in games is nowhere near over. But there is one thing that people on both sides can agree on. There are no easy answers. I believe that everybody is responsible for the product that they make. They can't take responsibility for how it's going to affect somebody. I cannot blame people that made the violent movies and video games and music that Eric and Dylan listened to. I can't blame them directly for Columbine. The blame lies with the two shooters. But I would say to those people, look, you influenced these guys. You affected them. They chose your media and it had an impact on them. It's the same as the responsibility that um, filmmakers have and television producers have. If they know that children are going to be accessing their product, then they need to seriously consider the potential consequences of unleashing this sort of graphic violence on kids. They're tasteless games, just like they're tasteless movies and tasteless books. I once had a debate on the radio with a woman who said to me with a straight face, games should be curtailed, not books, no matter what the content of the book. And I asked her, does that include American Psycho? Do you think you know kids should walk into Barnes & Noble and be able to buy a copy of American Psycho filled with pornographic descriptions of women being killed? Uh, and she said, well, yeah, I mean, that's literature, that's a book. And this was just completely absurd to me that people are not fundamentally getting the hypocrisy inherent in singling out games for this kind of treatment. I don't think you're going to see the industry stopping creating violent content, whether that means eating a little ghost in Pac-Man or blowing up mutants. These sort of core elements of violence are appealing to people in the same way that they are in television and movies and in other mediums as well. So I don't think it's going to go away. <laughs> We're all here trying to make life a little bit better, a society a little kinder and a little softer. And to that extent, selling these ultra-violent video games sets the stage for a generation of other individuals that are desensitized to violence, that are desensitized to defaming and dehumanizing individuals. We all have a responsibility to do something about that. If you were to try to artificially change the standards for gaming, it would simply move offshore. You'd end up with an industry leaving the United States and working somewhere else to no benefit because ultimately we're not going to be a successful Puritan enclave. There's a bright silver lining to the debate right now about violence in games and politics and that is that the country is aging and the country is gaming and at a certain point us 20 and 30 year olds who are gamers for life we're going to be the people in positions of power we're going to be the politicians we're going to be the Leland Yees of tomorrow we're going to get it we're not going to have these knee-jerk reactions based on totally unscientific arguments so over the long haul demographics are going to answer the problem over the long haul all the adults and all the voters and all the politicians in this country are going to be people who played games as kids every time there's a new form of entertainment that's what a lot of people look towards the comic book industry went through this in its early stages. Movie industry went through this for a while, and it's just video games' turn right now. These games reward you for one thing and one thing only. How to kill, how to maim, how to destroy individuals. It is a sick, disgusting video game, in my judgment. The criticism has got just no basis in sense or fairness or fact. These are people who don't know anything about video games. Most of this stuff is so unreal, how could you ever be influenced by it? They contribute to the violence in our society. They're teaching our children that murder and mayhem is fun. It's just a game. I mean, we're not going to do this in our backyard. 
If someone's just gonna go shoot people in real life, they probably have other problems going on. There are those in the entertainment industry who say that the studies are inconclusive, that there's no proof of harm. Well, we don't understand a lot of this stuff yet. And as much as science would like to claim that it virtually knows it all, we still have a long ways to go. So members of the video game industry, do you have the power to elevate or denigrate our society and our children? I think as we see in the years to come, as games become a more normal part of American society, I think a lot of these fears will really subside. Drinking, binge eating, thrill seeking. What happens when people push their bodies to the limits? Watch Tech TV's Body Hits, the only show that examines how your body stands up to the test of modern living. See how people live fast, work hard, and take it to the next level. Body Hits, a new series, premiering Tuesday, January 20th at 9:30, 8:30 Central on Tech TV. Rated M for mature. Listen closely. You're the best the Confederation has ever put together. Your objective, total obliteration. Brute Force. For interplanetary combat, there's no power greater than X. Aquí está Fanáticos, el partido entre los dos mejores equipos. Mario, el puta rival y se lleva el balón. Vean ustedes, va corriendo con el balón. Y se la roban. Tiene Mario nuevamente. Está Mario con el balón. Va jugando a la izquierda. Tumba uno, tumba dos. Jugada de maravilla. De ensueño. Tiene el tiro. Mario. Rougher, tougher. The game will never be the same. Super Mario Strikers is here, only for Nintendo GameCube. Rated E for everyone. Good jugada. Lipstick, compact, angry kitty proximity mine. All right, I'm ready to go to work. My name is Kate Archer. I'm a spy. It's the perfect job. I travel to exotic locales, meet interesting people. It's the challenge I enjoy. Admittedly, the work can be a little bit hazardous. Particularly when you're in harm's way. But I'm rather good at what I do. Rather good indeed. Besides, I'm just not the stay-at-home type. And though uh, saving the free world might be a dangerous job. But someone has to do it. Wish me luck. This game has been rated M for Mature. Can I get some music, please? Haven't seen Unscrewed lately? Take a look at what you're missing. I'm like a Greek god and Adonis. You gotta turn off the stove, Billy. Quit coughing, Billy. Do you think the aliens from outer space wear a lot of doodads on their hats? No! Dressing up as a blue body, do you have any skill? This is awkward. Unscrewed. Weeknights at 11.30, 10.30 Central. Only on Tech TV. For the most part, I love being a police officer. I love helping people. You really get a nice feeling from everyone in this town. 11825, Coast 6, 105 North Avenue. Yeah, we got a we got a robbery in progress right now. 10 for that. All right, here we go. Right, look at what we got here, son of a bitch. Back away from the car! Get out of the car! Get out of the car! It's time for free stuff. We'll give you all the info on the gadgets you gotta have. Tonight we're running down the best HDTV for the money, Apple's newest bling, and the music game everybody's talking about. And once our experts give you the scoop, we'll give it all away free. <laughs> That's why we call it Free Stuff, and it starts right now. Free Stuff. 
Welcome to Free Stuff, your one-stop TV source for all the things you never knew you couldn't live without. I am Morgan Webb, and tonight's show is packed with the latest gadgets, games, and gear. Now, our experts, Blair Butler, Kristen Holt, and CNET's Veronica Belmont, are on hand to give you their reviews. And once we're done, we're giving the stuff away. So here's how it works. Go to our website, g4tv.com slash free stuff, and enter your information. Then keep watching. We will show you the codes you need to enter for each product giveaway. Then we'll pick a winner at random, and you could be one of them. So let's get things started. Here is TV's Kristen Holt with the latest in digital photographic wonders. And what do you have there? Hey, Morgan. Hi. All right. Well, I'm all about the visuals tonight. First off, I've got a terrific new digital camera to show you. It's the NV7 from Samsung, and if you've been waiting to upgrade, this could be your lucky day, folks. It's a 7.2 megapixel camera with built-in image editing and special effects. It's also, it also features blur reduction, which is fantastic, and it's useful in low light when you want a longer exposure right. time. The NV7 offers plenty of manual control and presets like the macro mode, which lets you get as close as four centimeters away from your subject. It even shoots video. All this for $450. That is amazing. 7.2 megapixels is a ton. And the low yes. light feature is great, too, because how many times you're at a restaurant, you're at a bar, you're at a party, and you're like, okay, hold still, you guys. Exactly. And then it flashes, and everyone's like, oh. And all my pictures from me. <laughs> and the blur feature is great, too, to, yeah. to reduce that, because like all my pictures from Europe turned out horribly and if I would have had a camera like this it would have just totally helped that out right. and I like a lot of the features like um, the smart buttons here because right. it highlights um, the feature that you want to use and it's just fun. And then the like, context sensitive <laughs> menu so that you, yeah. you can do a lot with just the few buttons that you have on the back of it. Exactly it's just it's a, it's a fun camera and it looks cool it's kind of old school but new at yeah. the same time. Well, it also has a lot of automatic uh, controls but it does have some manual options so there's like a little bit of customizability. To it. Yeah, that work? that, that's worth that's, that's fine. <laughs> and, I, and it matches my shirt. It's got the it blue totally ribbon. Matches it's the only shirt. product I coordinated with today. So <laughs> I like it. And of course, you can do the macro photography. So you want to do nature photography, get to take a picture of someone's pores. That's yeah, fantastic. it's four centimeters away, folks. So if I really want a close up shot of Morgan's Nobody pores, wants that picture. I can do it. Okay, well, <laughs> this camera is $450, but we can do better than that. I think we can do better, <laughs> than, can that. Do better than that. For one lucky viewer is going to get this camera for free, so let's get the code word from our intern, Lloyd. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Lloyd. Hi, Lloyd. Enter this code at g4tv.com slash free stuff, and the Samsung NV7 could be yours. <laughs> All right, now we have some more free stuff to give away. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I almost okay. forgot. I also brought something else with me, something no home should be without. Absolutely. A 32-inch high-def LCD TV from Vizio. This TV is pretty much the best you can buy for not too much money. It offers a zoom and freeze function, which is great for moments when you're trying to copy down information from the screen, like say you're watching a show where a chimp holds up a sign, and it's a word you need to know. Just hypothetically. Just hypothetically speaking, yeah. you know, it could come in handy. So it also supports 1080i and 720p high-def broadcast, as well as standard definition. You can even use it as a computer monitor, and the bright LCD screen makes it perfect for rooms with ambient light. The key selling point on this TV, though, it's only 599 bucks. This I mean, is absolutely amazing. Like, these things are flying off the shelves. Like, I don't know if you could buy one of these if you wanted to. Yeah, no. Because the price point is They're amazing. Gone. Also, like, the, the view angle is great, too too, because you don't have to just look at it from straight on. You can, you know, be on any side of it, which is great. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I actually just purchased um, a flat screen, and you cannot buy one for, for this low with this higher quality. Yeah. And if I would have known about it, <laughs> I probably would have tried to get this one. I kind of got screwed out of my money, but oh well. That's okay. You know, because you're always going to have a great view, and it sounds like a lot of TV for the money. You did. But you didn't steal this, right? No, this didn't absolutely come off the back not. Of the truck or anything like that? No, no. All right, well, we're going to go. Lloyd and I are hooked up on that whole scheme right there. He was stealing the stuff. And Here yeah. is Lloyd with the code our viewers need to enter for this Vizio LCD TV. Ooh, it's spicy. See you at home. Go to g4tv.com slash free stuff. Enter that code now. And could right now. you possibly be one of our winners? I think it's possible. But you need to stick around to find out. And you know what else? We have so much more free stuff coming up. But first, we sent our own Zach Selwyn down <laughs> to the beach with a bag full of swag. <laughs> Feast your eyes on the Moto Riser. This thing's got the slider situation going on. It's got a 2.5 megapixel camera, music controls, and Bluetooth stereo. This thing is slick, and I have a great idea. Let's give it away for free. Anyone who wants to smash their old cell phone, I will give a free brand new Moto Riser phone to right now. You want to do it? What do you got? Do you have an old phone? Yeah, it's a free. Seriously, do it? We want to see it right now. Free stuff. Smash that. Right. 
Oh! <laughs> it's all over the place. Congratulations, enjoy that, have a good day. Give me a call sometime. Be a superstar DJ or just spin like one. This iPod accessory and satellite radio on the go will make you the coolest kid on the block, we promise. And stick around for your chance to win Guitar Hero 2 and a brand new Xbox 360 when Free Stuff returns. Renegades. I'm just going to have to do whatever I want to do. Rebels. Yeah. And pop icons. <laughs> Misfits. It doesn't matter. You're a nerd in life and you'll be a nerd always. And millionaires. It's a good way to explore the nature of truth. Forget the pocket protector. I want to make toys for myself. Meet the nerds of the 21st century. Nerd Nation, a new series coming in January to Tech TV. Welcome back to Free Stuff, the show that brings you the latest in gadgets, gear, and games. But that's not all, because once our experts drop you the details, we are giving this stuff away for free. It's too much for me to handle. You know, hence the name of the show, Free Stuff. The only way to win is to go to our website, g4tv.com slash free stuff, <laughs> just like Lloyd here is doing. And once you've registered, enter the codes as we reveal them. And you know what? This could be your lucky day. Now let's see if one of you is already a winner. The first thing we showed you was Samsung's NV7. This high-performance digital camera goes to Carlos P. from Louisiana. Next up, the Vizio 32-inch LCD TV is on its way to Mark P. from Virginia. Now let's see what's next. Morgan? Congratulations, guys. But sadly, our winners cannot be here in the studio. But our intern Lloyd is back to recreate for us what the winners, they must be feeling right now. Lloyd looks less excited than I would be if I had won that stuff, but that's okay. But we're on to more free stuff, so it's cool. We are happy to have a special guest expert on free stuff tonight. Say hello to CNET's own Veronica Belmont. Hello, Veronica. Hey, how's it going? So I see you brought a little DJ equipment with you here. Yes, I did. It, um... You know, this, you, are, you are a superstar DJ, and I'm going to ready. We have little Gangsta's Paradise on here. Yeah, I haven't lately been doing too okay. much DJ. The, the modern equivalent of this is two turntables and a microphone. This is the Newmark iDJ for iPod, and it can replace large turntables and milk crates full of records that club spinners have to lug around everywhere right. back and forth to different venues. The two built in docking stations fit all iPods with bottom connectors, and there are S video outputs for video iPods. You have a microphone input with its own tone and level controls, plus line inputs for other audio sources. You can also connect to your Mac or PC with the USB 2 input. The iDJ retails for 150 bucks. But wait, we're also giving away a video iPod which brings a whole package up to $400. Very nice. Now this actually seems like a very reasonable price, like $150. Seems like a really reasonable price for this unit. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it's really fun. You can switch back and forth between the things. Yeah. Unfortunately, you don't have the whole wicka 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 thing going on. So but, but who really not knows how to school. do that? Do you want to go to a party and there's like good music playing and like one of your drunk friends is like wicka wicka wicka. You're like, please, please just Back away mean, from the turntables like, and like let me. us just listen to some music. I mean, I've never done that. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. And my book club signings and stuff. No, I mean. no. <laughs> but it's great because it does come with one of the video iPods for free. Right. And then, you know, it has the other dock so that your friends can come over and bring their iPods. And, right. You know. And it's really easy to bring around, too. So if you just want to bring it to a party, you can just plug in everyone's iPods. And there you go. And Dance Party USA. Fantastic knobs. Oh, I love this. All right. Now, thank you so much. Now, Lloyd. If you please, show us the code viewers need to enter for this giveaway. Okay, there it is. Get to clicking. Okay, now you also brought a little something from Sirius. Yes, this is the Sirius Stiletto 100. It's a portable receiver for live satellite broadcast. And the two gigabyte hard drive stores up to 100 hours of recorded radio. That's great. The built-in Wi-Fi antenna lets you listen to Sirius over any available Wi-Fi network. And it also features a game alert function. This will tell you when your favorite teams are playing and alert you when the score changes during a game. You can also schedule and record programming just like you would with a personal video recorder. It's $350. That is steep, but it's awesome. Now, I do love the game feature so you know you're you're out you're out with friends you're at dinner and there's mm -hmm. like some guy at the table like on his cell phone using up all of his internet minutes right. desperately refresh 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 like that that really does or the guy who actually brings a small little radio around with him with a little <laughs> earplug and is listening to the game while you're trying to have a conversation you're like pay attention like, to hello, me hello 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 <laughs> this is great too because you can actually record the game 
and then maybe he could listen to it on the way home. Right. The one downside to yes. this is that if Sirius and XM merge, it might not be compatible within a couple of years. So you might want to be careful with that one. But you know what? That's not really going to matter to the person who gets it for free, right? Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Okay. Who cares, right? Lloyd, lay the code word on us. Here is the code you need to enter on, on our website for your chance to win. Go to g4tv.com slash free stuff. Enter that code right now. You could win the serious stiletto. I love that it's named after us too. It's fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being a really Almost so sexy. <laughs> so we are not done sharing our stash of all the goods you've got to get. There is a ton more to come, and we're giving it all away for free. But first, what has Zach Selwyn been up to now? The new Philips Portable DVD player. It's got an 8.5-inch screen. It charges and plays your iPod, and it's got an SD card slot. This thing is unbelievable. Let's give something away, baby. Can I ask you a quick question about a new TV show? Hi, how are you? Hold this for a quick sec. Hold the microphone. Hold this. you've seen it all? How about a keyboard with no keys? That and Apple TV means we're living in the future next. And keep your eyes on that 360. It could be yours when Free Stuff returns. Free Stuff. This holiday season, complicated is out. Simple is in. Jitterbug. Everything about Jitterbug is simple. It is a comfortable keypad, a bright screen, a powerful speaker. It even eliminates background noise. And no one else gives such personal service. Jitterbug is the friendly cell phone experience you've been waiting for. I'd be happy to place that call for you, Mrs. Kelly. Jitterbug. Okay, Mrs. Davis, I'll add that name to your phone list. We're here to help 24 hours a day. With nationwide service and affordable plans, Jitterbug is the perfect gift this holiday season. Jitterbug. Jitterbug. Service starts at just $10 a month. Jitterbug is available at Best Buy, CVS Pharmacy, and other fine retailers. Or call our experts now with a valid credit card and get a free car charger. 1-800-974-2027. Free stuff, the only show that actually rewards you for watching. So here's the way it works. We show you the goods that G4 has been buzzing about this week, then you go online, and if you're lucky, we give it to you for free. Visit g4tv.com slash free stuff, <laughs> just like Lloyd, enter your information, and you could be one of our lucky winners. And speaking of lucky, hmm, did you win something? Well, let's find out, Mr. Announcer, if you please. Well, Morgan, before the break, we showed you the new mark IDJ, and the lucky winner of that is Albert M. from New York. Then we showed you the Sirius Stiletto, a portable satellite radio and recorder that will wing its way into the loving arms of Fred R. from Texas. Congrats to all our winners. Let's get on with some more free stuff. Back to you, Morgan. Congratulations. Oh, Lloyd is a superstar <laughs> DJ. I wonder if he's dropping the mad beats. I would party with Lloyd. Would you party with Lloyd? Yes, I would. <laughs> so people are always asking me about Blair Butler. They ask, is she really that cool in person? They ask, does she really love comics that much? And most importantly, is she invulnerable to lasers? And the answer to all of those questions, friends, is yes. Blair? 
<laughs> oh, Morgan, the wonders, the wonders that I have to reveal to you. Ooh, yay. This right here is the iTech Virtual Laser Keyboard. Hot. It uses a freaking laser beam to project a virtual keyboard onto almost any flat surface. It is Mac and PC compatible and works with any smartphone or PDA. And best of all, unlike those fold-up portable models you see some of the nerds using. Nerd! Nerd! This is a full-size <laughs> QWERTY keyboard. And listen, listen, I don't know if you can hear this. I don't think they can hear I that. love the oh-so-realistic key click sounds that click, it makes. Click, click, click. Now, <laughs> click, Morgan sorry, providing sorry. The, uh, the effects. Now, it's about the size of a very large cigarette lighter, weighs just two ounces, and runs about 180 bucks, which yeah. is... Not too bad for for freaking laser beams. Well, you know, the great thing about this giveaway right here is 180 bucks is a lot to pay for a portable keyboard. It is. And the person who wins this is going to be the only one on their block with one, and that's I awesome. I think so. Remember the joy of laser tag? This is like the joy <laughs> of laser tag, but in an adult and useful form. This is like this is like a spy gadget. Yeah. And, and something that's actually cool to note is like, I'm sure that the people at home can't see the keyboard projected on here, and right. we did show it before in right. the dark. But it works perfectly well yeah. in the light. The dark just makes it kind of easier to show up on the camera. Yeah. So if you need to like update the MySpace behind enemy lines, you can completely <laughs> use this to do it. You can just like get down there and type in the dark. I can see you uh, updating your MySpace page behind enemy lines. Absolutely. I like to blog on the run. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> under okay, <fire>. Lloyd. <laughs> show, under fire, exactly. Show the folks at home the code word. They need to enter if they want to win the keyboard. <laughs> Thanks, Lloyd. Okay, now. Blair, what else yes. you got? All I'm right. not satisfied with just this. <laughs> no. I have something that everybody has been talking about. Yes, Apple TV. Oh, so cute. Oh, the nerds love it. They love it, and it's glossy. This little box streams your iTunes content from your TV into uh, straight into your TV mm -hmm. from your PC or Mac. I'm so excited about it. It has HDMI and component outputs, nice. and it gives you live updates of all your iTunes library contents. Now, it also comes with a remote, so you will never have to leave the couch again, you Thank lazy bastard. Goodness. And it's only $299. That that's fantastic. Yes. Now, you ha this only works with iTunes is what I'm understanding. Yeah, I mean that is sort of a bit of of the downside because right. um you can't watch everything on your computer. Um but, you know, in addition to movies and TV episodes, you can also get free podcasts and other content through the iTunes Music Store. So And the iTunes Music Store, they have tons and tons of television yes, shows that maybe you missed the first time. Maybe you don't have a DVR, maybe you don't have a TiVo, yeah. you know, but you can actually get a lot of shows. I mean, you, know, right. you can get Heroes, you can get Lost, you can do Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> I yes. I didn't know you were going to bring up Battlestar yes. Galactica. Frack. It's fantastic. <laughs> it, it, it's good stuff. Right. So you can actually watch that totally. for the iPod, for the, uh, yeah. for the download fee. Get so your cool. hot Cylon well, fix. <laughs> you can get one for free, so if you want it, Lloyd's here to tell you how to get it. So go ahead and enter Lloyd's code g4tv.com slash free stuff. And stick around because after the break, you know, you want to see if you've won, first of all, because it might be you. And we're very close to giving away an Xbox 360 for Can free. Have but, first, <laughs> but first, let's check back in with the Ooh. lovely and talented Zach Selwyn. Feast your eyes on the fly bar. This thing was invented by a pro skater. It gets up to five feet of air and it can hold up to 1,200 pounds of thrust. Does anyone want a free fly bar? You just gotta run up and touch the fly bar and it's yours. There it is, the race is on. Oh my man. Wow, he's already mastered it. Nice score on the fly bar, bro. We have lots more of the cool new stuff you can't live without when free stuff returns. We're giving away Guitar Hero 2 and an Xbox 360. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Free Stuff. We have lots more of the gadgets and games you need to know about. But first, register at g4tv.com slash free stuff. And, oh, I'm getting applause. You may be one of our <laughs> lucky giveaway winners. So take it away, announcer. Thanks, Morgan. First up, we had the virtual laser keyboard. And that goes to Nick A. from California. Then there was the ever popular Apple TV. And that's on its way to Lance J. from New York. Giving feels good. Back to you, Morgan. Nice, congratulations to all of our winners. We, oh, sorry to interrupt your blogging on our TV He's show. He's smart. Okay, Lloyd, guess he has to do that right now, but that's okay. Okay, are you guys ready to rock? Yes. 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 Woo! Well, if they've had online to get ready, they better be ready to rock. 
So we are going to go ahead and shred. We're about to show you Guitar Hero 2 for the Xbox 360. But first, here's Lloyd one more time to show you the passcode you need to enter to win. Now, there he is. Now here, they are G4's answer to Belinda Carlisle and Lori Partridge. <laughs> Kristen Holt and Blair Butler. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Why do I have to be Lori Partridge? <laughs> <laughs> they are going to fiercely compete on Guitar Hero 2 while I tell you more about the game. The sequel to last year's runaway hit rhythm game features a few upgrades like three button chords and a lefty flip option. Now you can play just like Hendrix. You also have some new guitars available like Gibson's and the ever popular Fish and Coffin models. The game features co-op, face-off, and pro face-off multiplayer modes. Three new characters and 24 new songs are available for purchase through Xbox Live, which is very cool. And the price? 80 bucks. Mm, so worth it. Very nice. But you know, you don't just get the Guitar Hero game for free. What else do you get? Like we said, the game is 80 bucks, but what good is a 360 game without a 360 plate exactly. on? Exactly! So, so we, we thought of everything, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> so our randomly selected winner will get not only Guitar Hero 2, but they will also get the console to play it on. Ready, Blair? Yes. Come on, come on. Wait. All right, go, <laughs> go up. <laughs> you know what? Okay. I didn't know if we had any star power. I'm not Lloyd playing very well. Lloyd also plays, and Lloyd has our winner, final winner of the night, which is fantastic. Um, congratulations to all of our winners. We promise. We'll get it in the mail to you right away. Um, <laughs> although, I <laughs> Blair a and Chrissy, I think my fingers are on the color. all over it. I don't think they're going to give it up anytime soon. No. I don't think that because what we're getting ready for the show, oh. all they would do, all they would do is play Guitar Hero. I just missed the longest note of the game. <laughs> And I think the great thing about Guitar Hero is that even if you're not a huge video oh, gamer, mm -hmm. it's a really fun game to play. It's a party game. It's really easy to pick up oh, and play, yeah. but it's yeah. really yeah. actually yeah. very hard. Can I pay attention? Oh, there we go. Okay, they gave the show. We have a conversation they, here, they, all right? It's, it's professional actually, musician and then me. The oh, one who has no rhythm on this. You don't this. need rhythm, though, because I just got this game this weekend, and I've already been playing it, like, or I just got it yesterday, actually, the day before I got out it's here. It's so addicting, isn't it? It is so much fun. I know. It really is, and you get two guitars. Like, anyone who comes over to your house mm -hmm. is going to be able to pick up the guitar, play they're going to have a great time at it. You really actually believe that you could play the guitar. Yeah, yeah you feel like a rock so star. Not true. <laughs> it's very like deceiving. Ever. <laughs> it's very deceiving. And you actually make the ugly faces that guitarists make. Like you find yourself in awkward positions and just making like really weird face, you know, faces. But whatever, it's cool. I don't mind looking like that. And you know, with the new version of Guitar Hero 2, you can play the um, guitar part. You can play lead guitar and bass guitar at the same time. So you can play together. Whereas in the old version, you could only play competitively, which was too bad. Like if you want to play mm -hmm. with somebody who's not that good. You I'm afraid that they're actually planning on a new game. It's gonna be like I know. It's gonna be fantastic. Wow, 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 but that is all for this edition of Free Stuff. Congratulations to our lucky winner. Yes. If you didn't win anything, be sure to watch Free Stuff next no, no. week. We'll have lots more stuff to give away. Friday, 10 p.m. on G4. Thank you so much. Good night. Good From the mean streets of Chicago to the perilous plains of Texas. The best players in the land locked horns oh. at the EA Sports Madden Challenge for ultimate bragging rights and a chance at 50 Gs. Oh, we get down, man. That's all we do. Now the Sweat Madden Challenge wrap-up takes you on a year-end tour of gut-wrenching finishes engineered by the greatest players the game has ever seen. He let a 14-year-old beat him by a touchdown. The Sweat Madden Challenge wrap-up, Friday at 10 p.m. When I walk down the street, they know I'm fresh. Back in the day, Fat Joe's friend Julio chirped him to invite him to a show. My middle name is FLY. All you and the rest is history. But without Boost, he'd stay on that corner where he'd discover an extraordinary ability to communicate with animals. Why are you bugging? <laughs> he said his tooth hurts. Word of Joe's skills spread fast, and he parlayed this street-level buzz into a lucrative career as a pet psychiatrist. A nice poodle or something. That's what I'm talking about. How does it make you feel when she does that? What does she say? Please. Tell him I love you unconditionally. Come to me. He'll come back. But luckily for us, and for Fat Joe, he has Boost Mobile. Where you at? Are you ready? Play hard. It's almost as exciting as anime porn. <laughs> Yay! Go wild. This is a great job I got here. I say no more! Join the fun. Everybody's feeling good. Woo All new Tech TV Late Nights.
X-Play at 11, Unscrewed at 11.30, The Screensavers at 12, only on Tech TV. Ever been told that broadband is out of reach just because of where you live? Don't believe it. Say hello to high-speed internet by satellite. HughesNet, the number one choice for satellite internet service in the country. And you can get it right now. So dump your slow dial up and jump into the high-speed action you've been craving. Faster surfing, faster downloads, instant email access, HughesNet delivers. And it doesn't use a phone line, so missed calls and dialing in are a thing of the past. All you need is a clear view of the southern sky. HughesNet is brought to you by Hughes, the leading provider of satellite communications worldwide. How cool is that? So what are you waiting for? You're done with waiting. Call 1-800-488-2828 now or visit GetHughesNet.com and live the high-speed life in no time. HughesNet, bringing broadband to everyone. Call now. You're welcome. Twice the hell. Twice the fun. The screensavers. Twice a night. Catch Leo, Pat, and the gang two times every weeknight. First at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific. Then again at 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Two times the magic. Two times the mayhem. The screensavers. Two times every weeknight. Only on Tech TV. Only on Tech TV. Today on X-Play, it's all Metroid. Hold on to your morph balls. It's game time. Composed by Hirozaku Hip Tanaka, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Hello and welcome to X-Play. Nearly 20 years ago, Metroid was first released for the NES. In the following years, the Metroid series has contributed some of the most impressive titles for the Nintendo console. And Metroid Pinball. Which is honestly pretty good, and every series makes the occasional strange choice, like the last season of Roseanne. Or X-Play since the fourth episode. Yeah, but we had a hell of a third episode. Mm. Yeah. But today, we're going to look back at the Metroid Prime series from Metroid Prime, all the way to Metroid Prime 2. And later in the show, we'll give you our first look at the new Metroid that's coming out next week, Metroid Prime Hunters. Yay, we're topical. We're addressing issues ripped from the headlines, just like Law & Order SVU. And that's the kind of quality programming you can only get on G4. And Emmy Award winning Fastlane. I want an Emmy. No dice. Oh. All I can offer is this look back at the Metroid story so far. With all the Metroid prequels and sequels that have come out, don't worry if you're completely confused by the series' complex plot. X-Play has you covered. We'll put the games in order of the storyline and break down what's happened so far. It all started with Metroid for the NES. Mother Brain, the leader of a group of space pirates, is out to snag all the Metroids, adorable little critters that are hell-bent on sucking the energy out of all living things. Unfortunately for her, Mother Brain doesn't plan on your ability to shoot all living things. Of course, the game's big shocker was the surprise ending, where you find out Samus was a woman all along. It's like the crying game in deep space with fewer penises. The events of Metroid Prime for the GameCube take place right after the first game. You destroy a space pirate operation on a station orbiting Talon 4. You pursue the bad guys to the planet's surface, but along the way, you'll lose all your powers and gadgets. That's right, you have to regain them all from the ground up. Yep, that happens to Samus a lot. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes teams you up with an ancient alien race called the Luminoths. Yeah, they're basically big mosquitoes. This entry features the ultimate Nintendo cliché, the light and dark worlds. Use your fancy new weaponry to take down the bad guys and kill your pesky doppelganger from the last game. 
Metroid 2 Return of Samus picks up shortly after the events of Prime 2. In this Game Boy installment, you go to the Metroid's home planet of SR388 and kill, kill, kill. Once you take out the Metroid Queen, an adorable baby hatches who thinks you're his mama. That very same Metroid baby gets stolen by bad guy Ridley in Super Metroid for the SNES. You have to fight your way through a rebuilt space pirate base and kill Mother Brain again. Fortunately, the Metroid hatchling you saved shows up just in time to power up your weapons and help you take her out. Metroid Fusion for the GBA picks up shortly thereafter. Since you wiped out all of the Metroids, you completely screwed up the food chain of their home planet. The parasitic virus they used to eat, called X, is multiplying to dangerous proportions. Unfortunately, you get infected by the parasite and have to inject yourself with DNA from the Metroid hatchling in order to survive. Ew. Samus wipes out the parasites and restores peace in the universe, at least until the next Metroid game. Oh, Metroid, you had me at Space Bikini. It's fascinating to see all the best Metroid moments strung together like that. All the best moments of Samus's life strung together like pearls. Uh, the best moments of my life. You were supposed to make a pearl necklace joke there. Well, sorry, it's just a little awkward when you realize your greatest achievements of the past 20 years all involve a woman in a mech suit killing giant brains. Look at them, there's nothing to be ashamed of. There are thousands of kids wasting their youths on way stupider games. Really? Yeah, yeah. There are kids out there wasting the best years of their lives on Gemstone 3 and Xenosaga and lesser Gundam games. Yeah! Yeah, so <laughs> if you've never been in love, so you've never played a sport, it's okay. Because you did it with Sama. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! But for all of those of you who didn't put the sweat into Metroid Prime to make it to the end, here's a look back at the final sequence in a classic edition of X-Play Spoiler Theater. Yeah! In Metroid Prime, the ultimate showdown is with, you guessed it, Metroid Prime. Prime takes two different forms. The first form is like a huge crab. The second form is this. to both forms, the ending proper begins. Is that Mother Brain, the main baddie from previous Metroid games? It can't get Samus. That's right, noobs. Samus is a girl. enough to complete the game with 100%, this is what you get.
Bring on Metroid Prime 2. Spooky evil farmers. I do so love dramatic foreshadowing. Yeah, like in Clue when Mrs. Peacock says how much she loves monkey brain soup. Mm. Mm -hmm. We should foreshadow something in the show. Like that later in the show we're going to preview Metroid Prime Hunters. Oh, you can't just tell them. That's not foreshadowing. Well, Morgan, we can't be too obscure. Our audience isn't, you know, all that bright. They still haven't figured out your secret. My secret. Your secret. You've said too much already. Quick, go to break. <gasps> After the break, say hello to Dark Samus. Tech TV Saturday nights. Find out how misfits became mainstream on Nerd Nation at 7. I think I'm having heat poisoning. I'm losing a lot of salt. At 8, it's the military's latest advances on future fighting machines. We're just an unstoppable force. Then find out the truth about excessive behavior on body hits. Followed by a real eye-opener wired for sex. A lot of sex workers migrated to the internet because it's easier. You'll see it all Saturday starting at 7 Eastern on Tech TV. for everyone. They went to junior high on the fortress planet of Zebus. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play for our special tribute to Metroid. Today we're looking back through the Metroid series and remembering how good games we already played are. Two years ago, Nintendo released a sequel to Metroid Prime. Innovatively, they decided to call it Metroid Prime 2. They did add the word Echoes as well, though very little of the game has to do with acoustics. Or dolphins. If only Samus and Echo the Dolphin could team up to fight crime together, now that would kick ass. But corporate synergy being limited, what we got was just a regular old evil Samus. Here's our review of Metroid Prime 2, Echo. Echo, Echo, Echo. We loved Metroid Prime. It probably would have been our game of the year back in 2002. Well, if we had such a thing back then. Now it's two years later and Samus is back on the cube and she's a little older, but not much wiser. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes begins with Samus doing her duty as an intergalactic bounty hunter by investigating a lost patrol of space police on the planet Aether. When she gets there, Surprise, surprise, her ship craps out, leaving her stranded. She eventually stumbles upon the Lost Patrol's ship, where she finds that bad things have happened. For someone who's supposed to be a savvy bounty hunter, Samus sure has a poor memory. Time after time, she investigates a problem, only to have her powers taken away. How about next time you leave the hardware on the ship until you know what's going on, girl? And alas, in Echoes, it happens once again, and Samus sets out to recover her abilities while trying to solve the mystery. And of course, what would a Metroid mystery be without space pirates? And yes, they've also returned, but they're not the only menace on Aether. And then there's Dark Samus, who obviously isn't a girl. No female would be caught dead in the same outfit. Aether has been split into two planes of existence, a dark side and a light side. The toxic dark side is ruled by an evil race called the Inns. Squaring off against foes in the dark world is annoying, because Samus must stay under protective umbrellas or lose extra health. The light dark mechanic is more irritating than innovative, and many times you'll have to pull a carry and flip flop from one world to another just to solve a simple puzzle. And this brings up another issue with Echoes there's simply too much backtracking. You'll get a message with a new objective, and then you'll have to open the map and try to figure out how to get there. 
The first handful of hours is truly a blast as things roll along at an incredible clip. But eventually, you'll be spending a lot of time running through the same areas over and over again, looking for the one door that hasn't been opened. Yeah, we know this is how Metroid works. But if this series is ever going to compete with the Halos and Grand Theft Autos, this has to change. Hey, man used to think the world was flat. Otherwise, Metroid Prime 2 is just as good as the first. The attention to detail is second to none. You get some new gadgets to fiddle around with, and there's also an increased emphasis on the morph ball, which we love. And of course, the combat is sublime. We give it a four out of five. Playing games like Metro Prime 2 or Prince of Persia the Two Thrones always makes you wonder what evil Adam is like. He's probably a brunette. Yeah, and I imagine he's got stronger bladder control than me. It's hard to be evil when you're doing the pee pee dance. Yeah, I always wonder what good Morgan is like. Probably a lot like Reese Witherspoon. But deadlier. Huh. In a moment, you are the ball. Two separate worlds, one shadow, one light. Where the difference between life and death is a few inches of metal. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, only for Nintendo GameCube. Rated T for Teen. You can call them Justin Bailey. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. Today, we're looking back at the Metroid series from grainy 8-bit Samus to the luscious vixen of Metroid Prime 2. And all of this is leading up to our splashy, exclusive look at Metroid Prime Hunters. But first, we have to take a moment to remember that the Metroid franchise has created kick-ass titles for a number of platforms. From the return of Samus on the Game Boy to Zero Mission on the GBA, Metroid has made handheld games that were consistently mature and action-packed. But nothing was a bigger surprise than the first Metroid game for the DS. Here's our review of Metroid Prime Pinball. Hmm. In the gaming industry, when characters get tired, the developers decide to throw them in an unlikely environment to spice things up. The results have been less than pleasing, giving us games like Mario Basket Weaving, <laughs> Mega Man Tax Audit, and Final Fantasy Square Dancer. Yeah. But after years of disappointment, the kids at Nintendo might have gotten one right by giving an interesting twist to an existing lore and sprucing up an almost dead genre. Metroid Prime Pinball may just be worth your precious while. The story revolves around Samus, the greatest female action hero since Ripley. Wait, who am I kidding? There's no story. Our hero decides to be the ball while being flung around a pinball table in every possible direction. But this game isn't only about flippers, bumpers, and ramps. The developers included some familiar characters to add difficulty and take full advantage of the Metroid license. After satisfying certain requirements on the table, you can roll into a special area and transform back into a human. This gives Samus the chance to unleash her fury on a bevy of shriek bats, beetles, and such. And like most pinball games, the longer you keep your ball in play, the more rewards you can receive. Oh sure, you get the usual multi-ball mode, but here they call the balls clones. Clever. You get to take a stab at some mini-games as well, like wall jumping in a rainforest and pest control Metroid style. You can also work the battle area to duke it out with the big boss dominating the top screen. The only major problem is the table itself. The game takes advantage of both screens, but there is a huge David Letterman gap between them. So when the ball travels from one screen to the other, it can be a bit disorienting. Not to mention that timing certain moves can be a pain in the ass. Also, you only start out with two tables unlocked, and you have to collect numerous artifacts to unlock more. While the replay value of this game is excellent, it can get a little redundant playing the same board over and over. 
Still, this is the best handheld pinball game on the market to date. The 3D rendered characters mixed with incredible environmental effects will make your jaw drop and your retinas dance. And the included rumble pack gives some extra shake to your rattle and roll. So whether you're a Metroid disciple or a hardcore flipper flapper, this game will pleasantly make the hours of your sad life drift away. We give Metroid Prime Pinball four unused Tommy references out of five. How is that not a horrible idea for a game? I don't think there's one single other classic gaming character who could be a pinball and get away with it. Kirby can make an excellent dodgeball. And I always thought Waluigi would make a good tranny. He's got expressive eyes. All right. Up next. Our Metroid Prime Hunters preview. Rated T for Teen. Later, they will complete this episode in a 13-minute speed run. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play. We're taking a look at the past and the future of the Metroid franchise. A new chapter in the Metroid saga is about to open with Metroid Prime Hunters. With online multiplayer support and cool new characters, Hunters takes full advantage of the DS and the Metroid legacy. Here's our first look at Metroid Prime Hunters. Nintendo finally did a triple Lindy into the online pool with Mario Kart for the DS. So you knew it was only a matter of time until more of its franchise characters dip their toes into the waters of the intraweb. Next to place their wrinkled feet on the rungs of the diving board ladder is Metroid Prime Hunters. Yes, Nintendo's Femme Fatale is going online, but Hunters is a lot more than that. From the outer reaches of space comes a cryptic message, beckoning the galaxy's strongest warriors to taste ultimate power. Not wanting to muscle the fall into the wrong hands, Samus heads to the Olympic system where she finds six other bounty hunters that have decided to make it a party. But Samus knows that there's only enough cake for one. The good news is that, thank you Nintendo, Samus does not lose all her powers at the beginning of the game. So you can forget about a lot of backtracking, making Hunters the most ravenous Metroid yet. Just like the GameCube games, you blast bugs from behind the safe confines of Samus's visor. And you still get all the other goodies, like morph ball action, platform jumping, and exploration out the screw attack. And what would a Metroid game be without epic boss battles? You'll get plenty here, including this grandiose throwdown with a wooden pole. You'll also square off against all six rival bounty hunters. And it's hard to deny that this game is brimming with Metroid DNA. As surprisingly robust as the single player mode is, the multiplayer options are what will keep Metroid Prime Hunters in rotation long after most handheld games have stepped off the dance floor. You can blast it out with up to four players online or off, with plenty of customization to use across more than 20 different maps. This is where you'll get to know the six new bounty hunters. Each has its own alternate form and fighting style. Candon will turn into a slug, while Weevil morphs into a gun turret. Mastering each hunter's skill is the key to survival. As the first handheld 3D Metroid, hunters may finally get you to stop playing Mario Kart. Get ready for all the ball rolling and space pirate blasting you can handle when it touches down this winter. Ah, shooting slugs. That's quality gameplay. Morgan, remember that secret you were foreshadowing earlier? Oh yeah, my big secret. I am a woman. The hell you say? Yep, X chromosome, small occipital ridge, the works. You think you know a person. I always assumed you had long hair because you were a hippie. Nope, <laughs> I'm a lady. I got a purse and everything. Really? Yeah. Do you, you, you have that thing on the back of the head? Hmm? No, you don't because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Tommy, do you know what mystery meat is? No, sir. Well, that's what's in those formed and pressed nuggets that you've got here. That's a pity, because you could be having KFC popcorn chicken. All white meat chicken, crunchy on the outside, juicy on the inside. Isn't it time to try lightly breaded KFC popcorn chicken? Get an individual size for only $1.99 or a family size for $6.99. This is springy and spongy, not worthy of a fine young man like yourself. Here you go, Tommy. Have a nice day. There's fast food, and then there's KFC. You found the G-Spot. Unscrewed with Martin Sargent's next. <laughs> talks about food. Foods like pickles, zucchini, bananas, and also how to play with food. Plus, a man whose idea of public service is to berate concert goers for their crappy taste in music using a megaphone. And finally, our girl gone wired is Bulgarian and says she likes romantic dinners, the poetry of Lord Byron, and steroids. Hey everyone, I'm Morris Wisher and you're watching Unscrewed. And now, a man whose doctor warned him to get off the steroids because, quote, he was way too muscular. Smart and Sergeant. this? Uh, that was, uh, uh, tai, tai Chi? Tai Chi? Tai Chi? Tai Chi? I don't know. In a fitness regime? Yeah, well, now that I'm off the steroids, <laughs> I got to worry about other kinds of roids, but that's another, that's another question. All my muscles are like atrophying, except for one big muscle in my body that keeps throbbing, baby. The giver of life, the heart. That's right. That's right. Hey, everyone, welcome to Unscrewed, the least hygienic nail salon in a strip mall of internet culture. I am your doe-eyed pedicurist, Martin Sargent. So get this, for the past couple of weeks, I've been scouring internet to find the perfect cell phone. And thanks to the forums and sweet reviews at Mobileedia, a site devoted to the latest and best cell phones, I figured out which one befit the Sarge. The Motorola 710, one super rad communications device. It's the first Verizon phone with Bluetooth, it's got brew compatible gaming, and a 1.2 megapixel camera with flash, yeah. Once I had this piece of gear on me, the folks here at G4 Tech TV started to notice Mr. Sargent. Ugh. Martin, as you can tell by my strong jawline and luminously white teeth, I'm the coolest guy here at G4 Tech TV. Martin, we don't like you and you are not cool, but that's one hell of a cell phone you've got there. So we decided you could hang out with us. Yeah. See, I'd always dreamed of hanging out with the cool kids, and now, I was one of them. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty awesome. It was pretty awesome. But I, I, I couldn't help but feel like I was forgetting something, or, or someone, or someones. Hey, Martin. Hey there. Yeah. Do you want to go to the Dragon Ball Z costume party with me this weekend? I'm going as Garlic Jr. Yeah. Oh, it'll be, yes. Yeah. See you then. Okay. Marty, Saturday night's the night of our book club. We're going to read Doom 3, Hints and Tactics. <laughs> now I'll never learn how to deal with fireballs. Laura, thanks to my new cell phone, I'm popular now. And I'm going to have to leave you and Charlie and all my unpopular friends behind. And I will never come to regret it. Never. Yes, thanks to high-end consumer technology, I was one of the golden gods of G4 Tech TV society. Nothing could stop me. Nothing except for the natural progression of this technological age. <laughs> is the Motorola XX9. It's the finest piece of telecommunications equipment out there, and it does everything. I'm making toast. It acts as a taser. 
And as you can see, this phone drowns out the ringtones of other lesser phones to exert territorial supremacy. Okay, no touching. No touching. Thus ended my glorious days of popularity. Because, TV friends, technology can make our lives easier. It can make our lives more fun. It can bring us pornographic pictures of women who would never, ever, 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 ever speak to us in real life. But technology can never replace real good friends. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Charlie, I didn't realize the inability to hold both a flashlight and a gun at the same time could affect your life so much. How did the flashlight mod affect your life, Marty? Ow. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I left you for all the cool kids after I brought the, the, the cool cell phone and everything. They, they just seemed so cool. They started hanging out with me. That one guy had all the white teeth and everything. And I know. It just seemed like a really fun thing to do. And like you guys are kind of dorky and everything. And I kind of <laughs> want to hang out with all, all the cool kids. But I'll never do it again. Okay. All right, Marty. But don't forget, the only reason you ever started hanging out with me in the first place is because I had that cool monster truck. So you know what it's like. You know what it's like. I you know, know what it's like, like riding like. USA 1 down the and highways I, and everything. You know how cool that is, right? And I, I want to apologize to you for only being your friend because of the monster truck and then also for taking it last weekend when you were asleep to Vegas to the Hard Rock Cafe and gambling with a bunch of people and then going to strip car afterwards <laughs> and not inviting you. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Are we, are we good? We good? I'm getting a better cell phone, man. I'm getting a better <laughs> cell phone. Hey, tonight's show just keeps oozing, and they tell me not to pick at it, but I just can't help myself. We've got roving music critic Evan Larrington here to shine the light of truth on people with bad taste in music. And we'll play a game that's fun and free, unlike my first sexual experience. <laughs> <laughs> and then Laura and I will visit a Yu-Gi-Oh! fan board and try to pick a fight with an 11-year-old. <laughs> but first, here's Dr. Peterson with another Mystery of Science Explained. Mysteries of Science Explained! Oh, hello, and welcome to Mysteries of Science Explained. Say. Have you ever wondered how a radio works? <laughs> well, I can tell you, it involves diodes and wires and boring things like that. But I'd like to tell you something exciting. I'm a shapeshifter, a half -er. And last night, I turned into a wolf, and I stalked a teenage couple out by inspiration point, and I killed and ate them. <laughs> okay, back to the science. Thank you for watching Mysteries of Science Explained. What? Thank you, Dr. Peterson. Mr. Science explain. All right, everyone. Whoa, hold on. You're going to love this. Coming up next, I'll tickle my pickle with America's pleasure coach, Sadie Allison. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. Get freaked with the G Spot every weeknight starting at 10. Unscrewed favorite is back tonight with their newest book, Tickle His Pickle, your hands-on guide to um, pickle-pleasing. Here's Sadie Allison. <laughs> Sadie! Hey. So great to have you here. Sadie Allison. Hey. All right, get it all over with. Sadie. Okay. <laughs> You're America's pleasure coach. We love having you on the show. I love your website, ticklekitty.com. Here's a little complaint I have about your website, though. Your website is all about chicks. And usually when you come on a show, you bring the vibrator and the dildo and all the toys for the chicks. Well, finally, you've done something right. You wrote your new book, Tickle His Pickle. Why'd you do that? Plain and simple, I want men to be pleased, and I want women to know how to do it. All right. Okay? Because one of, the most, <laughs> one of the most fundamental and common activities that happen in the bedroom is this type of pleasing. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, where do women ever learn the right techniques? So I wrote Tickle His Pickle to provide over 50 different types of sensations and techniques so women can really do it right. How to shop at the deli. How exactly. to go to the deli. Exactly. So you wrote a book about pickles, did you? Yes, I did. My pickle's dripping all over my desk right now. Oh. 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 Oh.
a lot of its crunch. Is there anything I can do about that? You know what? There's a whole chapter in Tickle's Pickle on that, too. Oh, yeah? So what's, <laughs> what's the number one thing that men and women can do to really make that experience, uh, how do I say it, down there, an outstanding one? Well, first of all, communication yeah. is always the baseline for anything when it comes to sexuality or just in life in general. But what I say, um, and I've interviewed plenty of men about this, the number one thing that I hear that men want the most in performance is enthusiasm. Yeah. Right. So you would much rather have a woman. Enthusiasm. Yeah. Exactly. You've got to act like they really love doing exactly. that. Exactly. That's much better than having someone that doesn't, that it's better to have someone that, that is enthused about it and maybe isn't that good than someone who's great, but she's not right. really You know, right? I see something like this, like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> see, the, the point is, I think, is like, <laughs> get it away. Get some that pickle, pickle away from me. Oh. I, I think yeah. it's like some pickles are, uh, some pickles are, are really, they're delicious, they're great, you know. Other pickles, <laughs> other pickles, not as great, although, you know, there's, you know, some women prefer, you know, cute little pickles, and others prefer, you know, you know heftier other words. kinds of pickles. Absolutely. <laughs> and really, you gotta get a pickle that you like. And every pickle has a different taste and, and a different smell, and oh, there's right. all different ways to um, take care of well, it. Well, this has been a fascinating <laughs> little look at female desire, but let's move on. In the book, you touch on a few of the lesser traveled areas of the anatomy, uh, like something called, maybe you can explain these things as I, as I uh, read a lot the terms, the taint. The taint. Okay, that is an area on the man's body. It's after the bouncing boys, but before you get to the back door. So and women have this area too. Oh, really? Yes, it's a the very idea sensitive is spot. It, it taint this, taint that. So exactly, it's right taint, in the middle. Taint. Right, got uh -huh. it. And, and there's lots of fun ways to please that with, with pressure and different types of techniques, and it's all in a chapter called His Back Door and More. Uh huh. Uh huh. So the back door, like the, the, the women folk, they should not be scared about ringing the back door. Ringing that bell. Nope. And men should be more open to it because it's a very highly erogenous zone. Wide open to it. Wide, Wide open, open to it. Um, <laughs> before we go any further, what's this? See, what's this thing here? This is, a lot of guys at home are like, I think I know what that is. But no, it's something different, guys. No, what is this? That thing? is called the Blue Betty. And it is a sleeve for men to it's perform self-pleasure. A okay. sleeve? Self-pleasure for the pickle. But, <laughs> but <laughs> it's like a sleeping bag for pickles. <laughs> Right? <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> I'm abusing but, the sleeve here. But right. the great thing with the Blue Betty is that it also is a tool for women to use when they are tickling the pickle. You can use that as a buffer so things don't happen when it comes to reactions, reactions that your body can go through um, that affect the throat. When the pickle gets a little too juicy. I see what you're saying. Okay, let's go a few more times. A few more times that we found in your book. I'm going to say you explain what it was. What is this turtleneck? Oh, the turtleneck. Okay, that is a gripping technique. Mm -hmm. When you touch the pickle, it's a certain technique in, in the chapter that's all about different ways for different sensations. The okay, the, the turtleneck, turtleneck sweater. I can sort of imagine. I don't see on this pickle. Yeah, okay, how about lip gloss? Lip gloss. Ooh, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. You basically you wear lather, a lot of it right you now. Lather up your lips really good. Uh -huh. <laughs> just so, you know, just make you it really, You lather up, really... you pucker out, and you go about tickling the pickle as if you had a missile lollipop or a missile popsicle. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Speaking of missiles, another kind of army term, the Hummer. This is a the truck, Hummer. right? Oh, yeah. This is that thing. This is that, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger thing, right? The Hummer. Oh, yeah. That's an easy one. Just hum away and hum that Star Spangled Banner. The Star Spangled Banner yes. is what you're supposed to hum? That's, well, that's one song. USA! USA! <laughs> well, I'm, okay, we got through the Hummer. How about the Yummer? Oh, the Yummer. That's all about it being yummy. Mm -hmm. You can add chocolate to the pickle, which doesn't sound so great at the A moment. A lot of but pregnant women chocolate. like uh, pickles and ice cream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, can also, you can also add honey. Or my favorite is fresh crushed strawberries. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. A lot of vitamin C, too. Uh, real quick, the cigar roller. <laughs> cigar roller. Roll it up like a cigar. Okay, got that yep. one. Finally, the violin concerto. The violin. Well, you have certain creases in your body that pickles can really enjoy, such as your fold of your arm. Mm -hmm. So it's all about getting creative and providing a whole different type of sensation there. So it's... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got it. Uh, you like Brahms. All right, Sadie, so great to have you as always on the Thank show. Thank you very much. Hey, guys, Sadie Allen, America's Pleasure Coach. Be sure to visit TickleCity.com for toys, education, and to buy your copy of Tickle Pickle. Thank you. 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 Thank
called Slippery Kitty. Slippery Kitty, there it yeah. is right there. That's uh, Hot Chicks and Free Lube, reason number 863 to come to a live taping of Unscrewed. <laughs> right. All right, everyone, just ahead. The next time you go to a Ruben Stoddard concert, you might have to endure extreme verbal abuse. And I'm not talking about Ruben singing. Understand the threat. Next. The Screensavers, weeknights at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Yeah, and welcome back on Screen. You ever see footage of like Entertainment Tonight in one of those shows of people at a concert screaming and crying and carrying on over the piece of crap band up on stage? Yeah? Does it gall you? Then you should meet my next friend from You Have Bad Taste and Music.com. Here's Evan Larrington. How you doing, Evan? Great to have you on the floor. Thank you for having me. So let me get this straight here. You go to uh, these concerts with a megaphone and you just start berating these people because you think that the music in the concert they're going to see sucks ass, right? True, but I'm trying to keep all my answers. Uh, your stage manager told me <laughs> short answers. This would be my Chauncey Gardner answer to this question. Now, uh, people have always thought that music was a subjective thing, that it was a, out of a matter of opinion, right? You know, what you like or what I like, you know? Right. But I picked up the June issue of Scientific Proof Magazine. You can get it at a newsstand near you. I invite your entire audience to pick up the June issue of Scientific Proof Magazine, okay? And I read information in that magazine that basically said that, that you can actually prove scientifically, not a matter of opinion, whether music is good or bad. So I took this information and I present it to the people who need to hear it most. Hey, wh what did he tell you about short answers, by the way? <laughs> Why do you do this, though? I mean, for, who makes you, what makes you the arbiter of good musical taste or bad musical taste? What do you know? I'm not. Like I just said, it's about scientific It's all fact. scientific. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's take a look at what all the fuss is about. We're going to do a little clip of you at a Linkin Park concert. Here it is. <laughs> Linkin Park's music is fraudulent and formulaic. Linkin Park is bad music. So I'm here tonight, oh, gentlemen, to no. you all that you have bad taste in music. Now, there are three simple steps you can follow. Yeah, yeah! The first step, I urge you to not attend this concert. The second step, stop listening to bad music. What's good What's music? music man? The third step, hold on, hold on, hold on. your radio and television. Pretty funny, but some of the people in that crowd there, they looked a little angry. They looked, well, a little hurt. Is anyone ever, like, you know, taking a swing at you for your antics out there? I, I wear a helmet for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, have you ever started scrapping with somebody because of what you're doing? No, uh, security one time got rough with me, but uh, people haven't. Really, all it is is kids who've just gone to the hot topic. You know, they're not. <laughs> exactly. So, why don't you take, would you ever do your thing at, like, a Motley Crue concert where you'd probably get your ass kicked type quick? Would you do that? <laughs> I don't think Motley Crue fans are actually that dangerous, you know? Really? I mean, yeah. I mean, well, maybe not like anymore. Have you seen Vince Neil lately? Woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's chubby. <laughs> I don't want to come out and say it. You're a very honest That's man. How about you get, you get hate mail? Uh, I get some uh, great hate mail uh, emails. One guy I wasn't sure because um, I thought maybe it was a death threat because he said he wanted to shoot me in the face, but I figured the bullet could pass from my right cheek through my left cheek and thus causing a painful hole. Right? Here, here's one up on the screen right now. I would love to see you come to KY, Kentucky. Around me, because I'll beat you so bad, and you'll believe a grand believe all will feel it. You all believe believable, I and all, I need to be shot. <laughs> so, any plans on going to Kentucky there, Evan? <laughs> Actually, they got some good bluegrass in Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they yeah. Got, uh, so, so build. okay. So, you go to all these concerts. How many concerts have you done that at? Uh, I think uh, ten, and the next one I'll be is uh, Alter Bridge, which is the uh, new Creed incarnation, right? So, uh, <laughs> Yes. So this is like a Christian rock kind of thing. Well, what they did is they had a neocon delusional thinking that will just lop off the singer, right? Uh -huh. like, and, uh, and then we'll replace him and everything will be uh, fine underneath it, okay? And uh, so they lopped off Scott Stapp and they brought in a new singer. And uh, the results Young, right? are not good. <laughs> is she the new singer? Or I'm, I'm not doing wrong. S S Sadie, <laughs> what do you think? Is, is he offended you? Do you like any of the bands that he's mentioned? He isn't offended. I think it's cool what he does. I think it's a lot of fun. Although Thank I'm you. interested, what is the, the scientific part of it that actually evaluates the music? Well, like I said, June issue, Scientific Proof Magazine. <laughs> Pick it up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Sadie, I'm in. I'm in Sadie. I'm in. This is uh, Sadie's masturbation yeah. sleeve. <laughs> Maybe you could take that home. You might need it more than any of us here. So before we run, okay, we, we know all the bands that you think sucks. Well, give me a couple of names of bands that you actually think are pretty good. Well, 
good music uh, is music that has... Don't give me this scientific American magazine crap. <laughs> Just give me some names of some good music. Uh, good music is music that has been scientifically shown to not be bad music. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, pal. Get off my stage. To see more of Emmett's hatred, or if you want to send him some hatred yourself, and I highly suggest you do, head on down <laughs> to you have bad taste of music.com. Thanks a lot for Thank you for having me. Good luck with that little adventure. Good job. All right, coming up. Find out why you might have bad taste in television by watching this, this show right here. For after the break, I will play with myself. Hey, you've got opinions, and we yeah, sort of like to hear them. Log on to g4techtv.com slash unscrewed and email the staff, join in the live chat, post on the forums, or even call our viewer comment line. Then you can pick up some tickets and cheer us on in person. Let's face it, you're going to have to come out of your house someday. No enemy. Anime Unleashed, next. See the best, greatest, biggest, shiniest, coolest, and blinkiest new stuff coming next year when the Screensavers goes live at the Consumer Electronics Show January 6th and 7th at 7 Eastern. And welcome back, everyone. Well, I think we have just enough time to play with ourselves. Yeah, you know, with all the election hoo-ha going on, I thought that I would share my vision of how the election uh, should really work. This game is called Presidential Knockout. Basically, I'm going to kick the ass of either Bush or Kerry. Who should I beat up, audience? Bush! Okay, I heard Bush. All right, so that's what we're going to do. All right. Oh, what'd I do? There's, there's an error. It won't let me do it. The CIA is keeping me from doing it. Keeping me from beating up George Bush. Ah! Go down, man! Go down! Ah, that's all the time we got. If you want to play that game, you can get the link at our website, g4techtv.com. Slash on screen. That's all the time we got. Thanks to my friend, Sadie Allen. I'm going to learn from Next day. Next day. 